Travis Parks. <laughs> Microphone check, one, two, what is this? Mike Miggity, 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 A. All right, mic check, one, two, one, two, mic check, one, two, one, two. We are live, we vibrant up here, that's my audio. Helpful. Yeah, it's for dramatic effect, wow, parts. I get this one too. Uh, uh, uh. You got two though. <laughs> he gave you one. He <laughs> bought one for you. He let me hold the oh, old yeah. one. He got the yeah. fresh one. Yeah. one two, <laughs> this the, keep this intro. Though. Where are you getting these from? How about that? So this one's mine. Bobby, right. Bobby, Bobby. Oh, there's still more in it. Man, man, if y'all drink this shit. <laughs> this is how you start. sauce grows on trees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> this is how you start a year in rap. Sit, Poppy, <laughs> sit. <laughs> no. Can you hear, uh, that's not, he's not a dog. No. Joe said it. Yeah, you go. Poppy, bum, 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 sit down. <laughs> All right, mic check, mic check, mic check. Is this thing on? All right, you know the vibes, you know what time it is. We are counting down to New Year's. Fuck is going on? I am your humble, nice. grateful, hey. not now, oh, parts. Okay. I am your humble, that grateful, nice. boy, these white boys gonna talk over my intro even on the special. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, some things don't change. Nothing special but Yo. just being at your house with different mics. We are, <laughs> we are the JBP. Welcome to our end of the year wrap up. This is officially my fourth year in wrap up. My first time doing it with my brothers, my friends, my coworkers, my peers. And it has to be this way because as a crew, we have alienated ourselves from all of the other media people. <laughs> That's a fun. I normally do this with Charlemagne. I don't know where the relationship stands. Uh, Ack, oh, is, no. Ack, it's over. That's gonna be Rob Markman, I'm sure they got a talk coming for you at some point. <laughs> <laughs> B-Dot, Elliot, who else we got? Star, <laughs> Nori, I was just with you. Hey, shout out uh, to Star. All, oh, Nori. Shout, out, shout out to to all of our peers Shout out Ms. Jones. who have helped make this year an amazing year in artistic journalism, uh, documenting the culture, uh, harsh critiques, so forth and so on. And with that said, yo, man, it was a real, real tough, tough, active year in the tech world. Right. Uh, a lot of upcoming apps that were out there trying to solidify their spot. Did you guys have a... A favorite app this year that I mean, this really found be. a place in your heart. I know it it's tough. It might be a tough debate. I know I think it's I tough. I only used one app the entire yeah, year. I only used one app. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to jump the gun quick, but I, for me, it was just Cash App. Yeah. You what, too? What a coinky dick. Oh, that's what you guys had on your list? Yeah. It's the same one. I mean, same one on. that I used. Green app. It go Hove, yeah. best rapper, Cash App. Yeah. yeah. Empowered by, sponsored by, enabled by, tolerated by, given mad passes by, totally understood <laughs> by Cash App. Uh, That's important. We appreciate you. Thank you and salute to the year that y'all have had, even. And, right. and thank you. Thank you for the partnership. Forward thinking app. Okay, so now that we have clearly established Cash App to be the number one app in the world. Mm. And kind of like the biggest moment. And the universe. Yeah. Cash App might have been the biggest moment this yeah. year. They gave us a lot of moments this year. They funded the moments. Yeah. They did fund them. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. Yeah. For yeah. Funding, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. For Seriously. funding the moments. And with that said, uh, we got a lot, of, a lot to get to. Now, I want to start with all of you people that contributed to putting music out this year, you won. I do want to. I do want to start there. That's an accomplishment. Uh, you're, you're better than us, because I would have been terrified. <laughs> I know. I commend y'all. Yeah. Putting out music in 2020, y'all deserved just applause for that period. Yeah. Especially that's, if you're on like a, a label label. <laughs> Either way, because yeah. if you wasn't on a label, you were gonna survive off touring. True. Mm -hmm. So I commend y'all. Yeah. Every artist that puts something out this year. Every I'm artist. Three albums this year, something. Every artist. <laughs> I'm clapping it up. For that guy. Every hey, artist. Hey, we, rely, we relied on touring too. Facts. <laughs> I'm still a little tight about our tour being canceled. Shh, facts. You. I sat with my my accountant December of 2019 with all the things I had lined up for the year, and my accountant went, "Hey man, you're probably gonna make more money 
than you've ever made in your entire life this year if we're going by everything you have scheduled. Mm-hmm. And boy, did I call my mom and see, oh, whatever you need. Right. I did the same shit. I did the same shit. I remember Christmas last, this time last oh, year, mom, I was call mom and tell her, put it back. Whatever you need. <laughs> put it back. <laughs> I was talking cash shit at Christmas time last year. Like, yeah. oh man, 2020 is going to be crazy. 2020 looked nuts on the yeah. couch. Y'all were right. 2020 was crazy. It wasn't the right one. Yeah. It wasn't the right crazy. I, Rory's right, though. I somehow got caught up in counting money that didn't come yet, and I conned my accountant into doing it with me. <laughs> like, yeah, it wasn't something my accountant was trying to, like, yeah. push me. He, we were just going through everything to plan out the 2020 year. And he was like, this is gonna, you're gonna make a lot of money this year. Yeah. And my dumb ass, who's never made a lot of money, was Same. like, oh, well, let's run it up. <laughs> this is just one of the lessons you gotta learn the hard way. Facts. Learning off experience is the best way to, to learn. It really is. Like, just failing. And I'm frugal it's with money. I'm pretty shit. frugal with money, but it, it still hurt. It still hurt. <laughs> I looked in my closet of all the expensive threads that have not even touched my body. <laughs> They're just sitting there for no Still fucking reason. Still got the tags reason. on them just in case? Yeah, I was like, oh, 2020, we doing like 20 dates. I'm going to wear this in, in mm. Dallas. <laughs> at his late, he had his late months early. Right. For, for the, the bed. For the October show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what this year told me. Just, yeah. just shut the fuck up and wait to see what happens. Facts. Wait till that shit hits the account. Mm. We laughing and joking, but the reality of it is, and I do want to be serious sometimes today, <laughs> is that we had a seven-figure <laughs> tour plant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, nah. Yeah. <laughs> I know y'all are making jokes. Oh, well, you got to jump through the pain. I, it was my first part-time being a part of a tour that grossed that type of Same. money yeah. with Same. that workload. Yeah. And I did look forward to it. Hell I yeah. did. I so did. A long uh, cry from our uh, little... Tahoe runs across the country. Yeah, yeah. Right, listen, and not only that, with not only our podcast shit, Palooza ended the year in Barclays. Mm-hmm. You talk a little different with Live Nation and your tour routing when you end a year with an arena. Yeah, that money was looking way different than it had ever looked before. I bet. And they said nope. <laughs> yep. Hold this flu. So for me, again, the artists that have had to create music, the artists that have had to create a new way of living, the artists that have had to uh, find new people, I know, Poppy, new people to be in their corner, new people at the label to support them, just new ways to gain momentum, new ways to go viral. This year indicated y'all having to figure out a new way to do everything. So before we go further, I want to salute y'all. I want to congratulate y'all and I want to commend y'all before I begin to shit on any of you. (laughs) Um, The shitting comes from a warm place and we just have to do it because if there was great in the year, then it was bad in the year. Mm -hmm. And I don't think before, I think before we even get into the music side of things, because all of that type of stuff took a back seat this year Mm -hmm. and It was life changing and the world changing and us adapting as humans. And for me, that started even before 2020 hit with Juice World's passing in December. Mm -hmm. Um, That set the tone in hindsight. Uh, Again, like I've said on the pod, that was one of my mom's favorite acts. He was he was on his way to doing doing some amazing things. So that hurt. And then when January came, Kobe's passing, not even maybe three weeks later, that was a lot. Mm. And then a month later was Pop Smoke. This is before any quarantine lockdown the world. So, I mean, for me as a musician or retired musician, the year was really weird. And I think that was highlighted because we were celebrating the end or beginning of a decade. Mm-hmm. So normally when you do that, you're like, ah, hey, in unison. You're like, ah, we going up, we going up, we going up. Papa, you all right? He has like that. Yeah. He's cool. Um, no, I think with the decade shit, like, I don't ever fault the people that try to use New Year's as a way to start new things and become better people. I've never faulted. I know it's become a joke, New Year, New Me shit. Mm. I've never, I like, I understand. All right, if you're going to use time as a way to reset yourself, cool, let's do it that way. Yeah. So when the decade happened, we all went into this, all right, it's a whole new decade. Mm-hmm. I can change so much off the last 10 years. 
mm-hmm. and then you start Kobe to Pop Smoke, and even though those aren't, you know, we didn't personally know those people, they're part of our culture and our like everyday Kobe, life. You know, we grew up with Kobe. All right. Boy, does that put a whole hinder on how I think I'm starting this new, fresh start of everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and even as like a 90s baby, by the decade is by the decade for me. Mm-hmm. I turned 30, 2020, 2010, turned 20, like that whole shit. So I was like, oh, I'm starting a, literally a whole new decade in my life. Right. And that's how it starts. <laughs> yeah. But I think more than anything, you know, it also taught us how, how resilient we are as, um, as humans, um, how resilient our, our culture is. Because it was it was times I know for me when we first went to lockdown it was like a lot of questions like all right what is this yeah because we've never been told we have to lock down quarantine at like, all so we didn't you know we didn't know what to expect it was a lot of like anxiety and people were just nervous of what was going on and then you look up and it's June July and it's like eh, it's not that bad right and now we in December and it's like damn we went through a lot we did you know what I mean like we made we it through a lot a lot of things happened um, there were some moments of Normal, normalcy, I guess. In the summertime, we had a couple, yeah, a couple, little, couple little pockets here and there where things yeah. kind of felt a little normal. But um, for the most part, I, I like the way artists found a way to maneuver. Yeah, yeah. I like the way our culture found a way to maneuver around things. And uh, and not only that, uh, people outside of music, like it was cool during the summer with the pandemic and everything. And there was just restaurants and bars. You could go get a drink on the street in yeah. New York. I don't know yeah. how it was in the rest of the country, but. Yeah. Everywhere was kind of like New Orleans for a little bit, mm-hmm. and that was kind of ill. Yeah, like, that I was nice. That. Yeah. yeah, that was that was really great. That was fun. It was definitely different, but it wasn't. Um, we made the most of it. Yeah, we made the most of it. So I think what we're saying here is, in one of the biggest moments in of the year, was lockdown. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. One of the biggest lockdown in human history. Yeah, COVID. I think, like, yeah, that was. I think everything kind of dictated off lockdown. All the wild yeah. shit happened was just a the family tree of lockdown. Mm-hmm. It started with quarantine and we all adjusted and wild shit happened because we were all sitting in the entire What house. was the first change or adjustment that you guys noticed about yourselves during that initial part of quarantine? Mm. Like uh, for me, I learned how important human interaction was for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I found myself like insta-living a lot. Not because I was just having a blast, but because I just needed to talk to people and avoid the four wall syndrome and cabin fever and, and all that shit that comes with being locked in the house. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of Zooms with family members and, you know, friends that I consider family. And that that was great. And it was every weekend, you know, getting drunk and hanging out, looking at the screens. That was a lot of fun. I did a lot of, um, I got rid of a lot of clutter. Mm. Things that you notice you, you don't need. Yeah. Like you I I became like minimal is more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and I that was one of the things I learned about myself is that I have way more than I thought I needed. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about way more. Like I can never not be grateful. You know what I mean? Like I I I think I can speak for all of us, like going through this quarantine and this pandemic, like, yeah, things change, but at the same time, you know, family is healthy, bills were paid, yeah, food was on the table, you still were able to move around and do some of the things we like to do. And, um, you know, at, at first you think you're missing out on it, and then you realize, like, I have more than I need. Yeah. I have more than enough. And that, that was one thing I learned about myself through this whole year is that I definitely have way more than enough. Yeah, I'm extraordinarily thankful. Despite the fact that we just joked about losing all this money, we still had enough to, you know, absolutely. Live. Oh, yeah. Super, you know, super, that's a super grateful for that. Absolutely. Super a grateful for that. that. I, yeah, I don't want to make it sound like we're complaining about losing yeah, a seven-figure yeah. tour. I'm uh, complaining thank, I, about losing a well, seven-figure tour. Absolutely. <laughs> I had big, I mean, I'm getting Sorry. married this I, I year, it, but the next but year, thank theoretically. God I was able, my family right. was Yeah, able I wanted to, to buy a house and shit. Like, shit is fucked up. That's going to that's gonna take a while. I mean, I like you it. Didn't. I like it. What do you do? I like it. Uh, I, you know what I learned about myself? I'm going to just shift gears. And just, <laughs> uh, uh, no, nah, what, what, what I learned during quarantine, for real, was how many hobbies I don't have. I, I, had, I had a therapist ask me, like, all right, so what do you do to, like, for enjoyment outside of work? Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I, my work, I love, I'm blessed to be able yeah, to do yeah. what I love is work. Yeah. And she was like, nah, it's great. I love that. Yeah. But, like, what do you do outside of work that makes work. you happy? I was like, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who I am. I have no idea. I'm like, wait, am I a really shallow dude? Yeah, I don't, yeah, like, yes. I don't know. So 
in quarantine, I started finding out all the hobbies I didn't have. I was like, mm -hmm. oh wow, I don't. If I can't work, I don't know what to do. You don't know who you are. <clears> yeah. I mean, who the fuck That's have real. I been? That's real. Yeah, no in gyms. My 20s. No gyms was rough. I was working out with rubber bands and shit. Like shit got weird for a while there. Because you, as Dude, humans, I'm, we I'm have so a routine. With you. I'm glad that they're just skipping over what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Like, Yo, what about the gyms? Yeah. <laughs> Rubber bands. Yeah, man. we couldn't work yeah. out, man. Damn, Joe, you don't got no hobbies either, man. I'm so with Rory on this. Yeah. Like hey, that became yeah. a real, uh, that became like a real tough question in dating. And dating during quarantine was tough too. Okay. But it was like, hey, what do you do for fun? And without work. And without restaurants and bars and clubs, mm -hmm. I was like, do I even know myself? I don't even exist. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even like, exist. Yeah, no. It must have been true. hard as a as single gentleman. You guys oh, should yeah. speak on that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get to that later. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's hard for some of them. Yeah. <laughs> I know it, it, it was. Honestly, it was. <laughs> <laughs> you walk right through that thing? Show them, <laughs> 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 what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> what, what used to be in popping your car? <laughs> Well, you don't have collars. I don't know. I'm popping my mock neck. <laughs> Walk right Stop. through that. Yo, Parks mentioned something. And for me, because my memory is bad, I'm going to try to go through some of this in like chronological order. So lockdown was big mm -hmm. after the deaths. And Parks mentioned Zoom, which for me, there's a few things this year because of how wild the year has been where at di different times I've loved something about the year and I've gone on to hate that very same thing. You? No. Zoom is right on that list. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Zoom, I'm super appreciative for all that y'all have contributed to the year. For sure. Many of us would not have been able to get work done mm -hmm. without you, no, which it, was it, important because was Spotify was, was riding my dick to use you guys to get back to work. Well, so Bill thank Simmons you. Showed you how to use it. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> Zoom, yeah. thank you. And I hear that you guys' stock is up, up. Oh, man. Talk like, about the rich getting richer. Up, 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 up. Awesome. I hate Zoom. Uh, I, I hate I, it. I hate the yeah. I, get I it. hate it too. I, I hate, hate, it. I hate relying on it. No. For what we do, I hate yeah. it. Yeah, I don't hate do. Zoom. It's I hate people. People have used Zoom to make me more angry. It's not Zoom. I love that I can just click something and see somebody if I need to. Right. I think that's great. Uh. I've never envied a conference call in my life more than 2020. I used to hate conference calls. Yeah. Now I'm like, yo, can we just? Talk on the phone. I don't need to see y'all faces. I, I don't need do to see the those. weird background of your home and your family pictures or your really disgusting kitchen uh, or mm -hmm. when I'm finding out how much money you are making or not making and yeah. I start making a judgment call of who I'm talking to. Uh, yeah. Just like, why can't I just get on the phone with you or text or email? That's what I miss. Yeah. And the people just like, nah, let's do a Zoom one-on-one. -on -one. Or I could call you. Right, right, right. Yeah, relying on the Zoom as a tool is annoying because it's like seven times more work than just getting on a phone call or email or a text or meeting in person. Like, yeah. I gotta make sure the lighting's right and shit. Like, and I'm not even that guy, but you have to. The IG Live thing got a little weird for me. Mm. So many people were just talking to each other on IG Live, and it was like. I'm glad you brought it there I'm because. Like, what is going on? My man of the year is probably D Nice. That's oh, reasonable. Yeah. He came up. Yeah. Deservedly so. Nice Deservedly so. At, at, at the darkest pandemic. time in, in quarantine, too. He yeah. brought some joy. Like, he. Fam. Right when we was at our what lowest. What D-Nice did for my <laughs> life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can never repay him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I look at, like, D-Nice. A lot of people didn't know about D-Nice. Cool. I wasn't one of those people. D-Nice didn't come up, like, he didn't gain a whole bunch of new relationships industry-wise by doing what he did. Like, it wasn't self-serving. Yeah. His no. bag was already up. Yeah. His relationships were already up. He had already done the inaugural or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. he did that. So that was purely like a selfless, oh, shit, the world is fucked up. Mm -hmm. and, and at the time, I was where w Rory was. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how I'm going to cope in this house. I'm tired of Insta Live. I'm tired of all this shit. I don't feel a connection to people. D-Nice was like the gateway to people when we thought we couldn't get to people. Mm -hmm. uh, like common, the whole club common quarantine. Ground, common ground of what we love is music that we could all choose. Yes. About. Yeah. Familiar yeah. Familiarity. Facts. Once again, the hip-hop culture saved the world. Yeah. Facts. But now, outside of D-Nice, I'm with you. Yeah. I hated all you niggas on it. <laughs> now, there was a lot of other DJ. DJ culture in general did a yes. huge service oh, no, to, they, to, they, they to... I'm not talking about the DJs, really. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, DJs but, crushed. Uh, but it just, it just showed 
Corporate is gonna corporate no matter fucking what. Oh, D Nice did all that amazing cultural shit, then all of a sudden Chris Christie's in the comments like, love this funky tune. Uh, <laughs> What's this jazzy little number you're playing? <laughs> <laughs> this like, takes man, I know you're running right now, but <laughs> yeah. just stop. Okay. Biggest moments of the year. Well, I feel like we're that meme of those three little white kids sitting on the couch <laughs> that they put the <laughs> The caption at the bottom. What's the you caption? want to talk to your friends, the podcast one? Hmm? The podcast meme? Which one? The one where there's a pic- big picture and yeah. someone listening to that. That's not what you're talking about. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the three white kids that are sitting on the couch that are like 11 and it says at the bottom, is 6 9 a bitch for snitching? <laughs> <laughs> I think they put Maul's Young Boys as one of the <laughs> memes before too. That's right. The audio. <laughs> it's going to pick that up. We get back in. I don't know, Rory, because I don't look at pictures of white kids. <laughs> I figured this was our way to come back in now. Oh. All right. Biggest moments of the year. Uh, for me, naturally, Tori and Meg is high on that list, but that's not where Joe will start. No. I will start with a story that I took personal satisfaction and personal pride in this story developing right before our very eyes. Oh, Jada and Will in August. Uh, that was number one for you? <laughs> hey! 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 Not any hey. vaccine. Hey. Hey. Presidential. No, no, no. no, no buddy. Spotify that wasn't deal. it. The perfect Smiths. Not yeah. the perfects. Yeah. That's something going wrong with the perfects. That's true. Yes. Look at you happy to yes. see this downfall. That was, that was awesome to me. August being messy, them replying, Red Table Talk, him having an album, the internet being confused. This went on for weeks. I loved every second of it. One of my favorite stories of the year, also one of the biggest moments of the year. For sure. But it, it, it's, it's just unfortunate because it, it kind of just came, of that one. came and went. It's unfortunate about everybody in the situation getting their rocks off. Uh, facts. <laughs> Everyone no, got fucked up. Every, everybody everybody <laughs> got <laughs> fucked and was happy. No, it was only the internet man. Like, oh, my God. No, I'm saying it's unfortunate. Only August is upset. Smith is cool. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's why it's unfortunate because it's like, yo, you did that for what? August, you were a messy little thing this year. You get my messy little thing award. Yeah. I'm giving you my messy little thing potty. Who else was in the runner? <laughs> a lot of messy. Me? You. me? You was a messy little thing. No way. This year? No. Nah, this is one of your cool years. Behind closed doors. Come on, this is for the cool. Yeah, this is one of your I didn't think I was so messy. Yeah, listen, salute to the Smiths, salute to August Alcina. I thought that was an amazing, amazing just tale unraveling right before our eyes. Yeah. These guys don't seem to have appreciated it. Was entertaining. it, it no, it was, I, I appreciate the entertainment. You know, a lot of memes. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate cleanups. Cleanups are funny to me. Yeah. Like watching the bullshit that you could see through with a straight face yeah. is my favorite thing. Like yeah. This sit down with Jada and Will at the red table was the funniest clean I've ever seen in my life. Will, was Will just sitting there agreeing like, <laughs> hmm, yeah, you were a bit entangled, huh? Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, knowing what Will had already said to her six months earlier, I told you not to fuck that little kid in my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Let it be a lesson we, learned. We could tell he said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was okay. pretty transparent okay. in the video. Yeah. Sure. And then the people that just, just bite and agree with the cleanup like oh, how mature these two are look at will yeah going through no he said what he had to say he's over it now yeah. <laughs> that's and, why this looks so mature to you and here's the bullshit about all this i'm the only person that really enjoyed august's album <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wanted to yo f- niggas didn't fuck with that album no uh, i loved it some of his it, it best was, work he's yeah. talented no he's very talented, he's talented. Uh, he leaned a little too much into that and wasn't it like 40 fucking records on that it was, it, was just, it was it was just that that he didn't realize that those two names would overshadow and overpower anything he had coming. Yeah. They didn't care about the music. It was about the story after that. It wasn't and he about beefed with and he beefed with Joe for calling him messy. Oh no, he can't beef with nobody for he got, come on, you gotta be real, because you know that was messy. By the way, I think that's a really interesting point Mo just just brought up. That's not just to all this. <laughs> But it's to a lot of artists that try to go after the big moments or the big beefs to do their rollout. Yeah, sometimes not realizing the names are bigger than- that if you do a rollout too good and, and too much with fucking attention, 
no one's gonna care about your music. No, it's just you need cool to balance too. the idea of I'm putting music out and I need to put out a good rollout that has attention. But the attention needs to be the music, not that I, I fucked Will Smith's wife. No, right. but not only that, it's because the Smiths will always be up here no matter who's making music unless you top fucking tier. Yeah, but you. Not only that though, it's Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? Like no I matter you what know. you got coming after Will Smith's name is mentioned, nobody <laughs> hears it. Yeah. It's Will Smith, and that's just the bottom line. That's hey, why I put it this way. Will Smith's music is behind Will Smith. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it, it was a messy moment for August, but he is talented, and I hope that 2021, he gets back to just the art of music. Leave the messy shit alone. Talented kid. Yeah. True. I agree. Big stories for you guys. Meg Tory, Meg Tory, Meg Tory. Yeah. I mean, that's probably still, the still biggest ongoing. story still ongoing. of the year, right? Yeah. yeah. Or one of the biggest stories. I don't think we'll fully understand that sentence. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck the year. Of yeah. just the existence of hip hop, the sentence, what what happened happened, and we will find out, of Tory Lanez shooting Meg Thee Stallion. Just that sentence in hip hop is fucking wild. Yeah, right. fuck this year. That's a hip hop moment from 1978 to 2020. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. we never we've never uh, heard anything like that. Um, never experienced anything like it. Like we spoke about when this first happened. This was definitely one of the wildest stories in our culture's history, for sure. And if it is, and if this is what indeed happened, which is this still an ongoing case, it makes it even more unfortunate because why? Two talented people. Yeah. You know, somebody will go to jail, prison for it. Somebody is traumatized for the rest of their lives. Yeah. It's just unfortunate all the way around. But this was definitely the one of the wildest stories in our in our culture. No question. Um, what else was big? What else was big this year? Um, Versus was big in the year. I'm still on creatively. I'm not on... Sad. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of the protests this year were big for me, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the Senate seat changing was big for me. The election, the, the fuck, all of that. Was this the year. Impeachment, it's been a crazy year. <laughs> the impeachment, was all of that stuff was big. But creatively... Right after D Nice comes versus for me, boy did they they just uh they just provided a lot of bright spots uh and a lot of a lot of back and forth that I just never thought I would see. Yeah. Yeah. It was the brightest moment of the year to me. Probably like, so. I know we our listeners have joked about this is the versus cast now and all that shit, but like if it you is. see the, the impact that shit had this year and how yeah. we, I hate the word uplifted, but it was such a great Moments to be like, oh shit, we get a verses this weekend. Yeah, finally, I got something to do. And, and what are they expecting? All the music man, I like. like. We we did verses ourselves for fun for years. Yeah, so of course agree. we're gonna talk about verses when it becomes an actual. Yeah, thing. I mean that's it's sorry barbershop talk to begin with. Now we get to see it from the legends, and they get paid for it. And to your point of bringing everyone together the way D Nice did, we have a common thing to talk about that we all love. Yeah, like, well that's what I was about to say. Outside of the creative genius behind versus and what it's done and what it's meant for people. The business and the back end of now showing some of these companies and executives that there's value in your old catalog mm -hmm. that maybe you didn't know how to get to today, mm -hmm. that was big. Yeah, yeah. and that, it was also, again, for, for, for the generation now who wasn't familiar with a lot of these artists, their back catalog. Yeah, I think that, that, that old was, that old niggas. I never en envisioned to be sitting home saying, "Hey, how do I get my streaming up?" Right. right. Yeah. Right. But it happened. It happened. Yeah. So I mean, man. I especially like the early stages when it was songwriters and producers, where mm -hmm. you don't necessarily those are people that aren't as known. You know what I mean? Because right. especially now, there's no credits on any platform. Shots title who has which, credits. Which which I would like to call out versus four. Uh, I think that was a. Uh, B. Cox did ask me if I thought Versus would ever get back to the producers and the writers, and unfortunately my response was no, Thanks. just because it's Apple involved now. They want um, the superstars. The cachet seems to have changed a little bit, but I would love to see y'all get back to I, writers and producers and things of that nature. I disagree yeah. a little bit. I mean, not to take anything away from E-40 and Too Short, both legends in their own right, but still somewhat niche as far as what their music was. Of course they have huge hit records, but that's a very Bay Area sound and they still did that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be odd for them to go back to the Brian Michael Cox's of the world that wrote number one records for decades. I like you're still gonna play really popular music if you go back to certain writers and producers. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the name isn't, but that's just how you market it. You have to figure out a way to market 
who these writers and producers are to get people to watch. Oh, they wrote all this for X, Y, and Z. It's right. Like, that's a marketing thing. Yeah. I don't think it's far fetched to say they'll go back to the legendary producers and writers. Yeah, because okay. we're not that far. We're not that far removed. I'm, I won't debate with y'all about it. I yeah. mean, I hope y'all are right. I, I understand I would love your to, forecast. I would love to see it. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I love the writers and producer shit just because I'm a I'm a music nerd, but I'm also love pop music and I love huge records. So it was such a great marriage yeah. of highlighting the people behind the scenes that put this shit together, but we could also jam out to records that everybody loves. Yeah. Like, the nerd in me loved all that early versus shit. Me too. I thought that was great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like all the way through uh, Sean, the Sean Garrett shit, like it was hilarious, but in the back of my mind, I was like, all right, I don't care if his drunk ass is doing this. People are finally going to give Sean Garrett some flowers. Well, that's the funny thing about the behind the scenes, guys. You want to get some more characters that are willing to do some more funny shit than like a super duper star because they got to well, protect their drunk. image in corporate. You know, well, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. But you're not going to see Alicia Keys show up hammer drunk and yeah. making yeah. funny faces. Like, it's not going to happen. So I hope that they do go back to that, at least like a uh, undercard thing that we talked about. Like, Well, one of my favorite verses wasn't a verses at all. Actually, it was something that I put together, which was Hit Boy versus Boy Wonder. Yeah. And talk your shit. Yeah. Man, I won't talk too much shit because I, if that happened... Four to five months later for Hit Boy, this goes way different. Like we was, it, it was early on, but uh, I think that was one of my favorites, along with fucking Tim versus Swiss early on. I just we'll get into our favorite verses. Hit Boy later. dropping that uh, Nipsey thing might have Nipsey verse on Sean record might have been the best moment of all the verses, in my personal opinion. That was the most memorable thing moment. to me. It was it was really dope. Yeah. Yeah. and and I mean just shout out to the people that were early on the shit because I mean and again I don't know their business nor am I asking it. Wait, and you're a podcaster. <laughs> I mean, you don't know actual, their business? Their <laughs> you don't know their finances? Like, I what? Think, <laughs> Whoa. I think, I think people like Boy Wonder and Hit Boy did this just to feed the fans during quarantine. Like, yeah. I know everyone now with Versus gets a bag, their streams go up crazy, they benefit. Like, I think a lot of legacy mm-hmm. acts are like, I can't wait to get that Swiss call because yeah. I know how much money I'm about to get off this shit. Uh-huh. They was on IG and their own studios doing this shit for us. Like, right. that early Versus cast, we need to give credit to. Yeah. Like, Dream just don't do shit. And yeah. Dream did that. Yeah. Like, he did that for us. Facts. I don't know if he got money, but either way, it was on IG, and they was just doing shit for fans in their living rooms that were miserable. Like, I can't do shit. Yeah, I'm glad so from a production a standpoint that they moved on because it was an Me absolutely too. horrid experience listening to it, but mm-hmm. it was more fun when it sounded shitty. Well, that hit Boy <laughs> and Boy Wonder uh, battle, that definitely accelerated both of their careers. They were both very two very good producers already, but... The artist that hit Boy well, is going on the for Boy One. Oh, wait till you see who he who he been in the studio. I've been talking to him. <laughs> he been in the studio. But but do you don't think the two of them was already in those studios before Versus? Uh, who Boy, Boy Wonder is working with? Wonder he Wonder hasn't. Works. Boy Wonder works with Drake. I know, who? but who he hasn't? Hit who Boy he, works with Beyonce. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying is, there's there's I'm other. I'm sure there's there's other there's there's new Drake. Oh no, man! In fact, Boy Wonder, Wonder found the new Drake. There's other the legendary artists. You, you made Drake make another one. I know there's other legendary artists. Though. It's not just Drake. That's all. Most things high school. I'm all Rashad. Legendary artists. I mean, you know. Well, tell us, nigga. Give us the give us the sneak peek. You can't spill the beans here. Can't do that. Who uh, else could Boy Wonder be in the studio with that he hasn't been in with? Michael? We'll see. Prince? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. 21. God willing. No, Why no. you didn't get Coogee down to your socks? We didn't see it. Well, uh, Nike I'm still a fan of the Coogee sock. Not Nike socks. I like the Coogee. mismatch. Oh. Christmas, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, you know. Oh. I'm a Coogee, oh, Coogee sock. Not down. Nike tech socks with a Coogee. Yeah, you know nah, what I'm saying? I should go, though. No, you're not comfortable, big. Comfortable. Comfortable socks. You're not big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, Grammy, the Grammy debacle. Yeah. The first one and the second one. There was two, I think. The Grammys that happened this year. Yeah. Let's start with. Was yeah. there two? What was the two? Well, the, the Grammy announcements January. that just happened recently. And then the... Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Both of both them. Yeah, the Grammys is a mess. Let's just... I'm talking shit. about show. Yeah. when Shorty from the board got busy and was just like, yo, toxic. All of them is corrupt. The lawyers, the managers, it's all corrupt. And then she went on 
She did uh, the press run. She was on Good Day was New York. Year, was this year the year that the, the main dude of the Grammys was on some women need to work yeah. harder shit? Yes. That wasn't this year. No, that was last year. Okay. Either way, we we know that what's up. <laughs> Yo, that was fucking That nuts. was crazy. Especially because he came out that shit like a press conference. Like, <laughs> he came out and was like, Yo, I know we didn't have any women. Maybe they need to work harder. <laughs> That was crazy. Well, if it was, if that wasn't this year, it was carried over into this year yeah. when Shorty, um, and not Shorty, I need to get her name. Uh, it leaves me at the moment. That's what the head of the Grammys was saying. Shorty needed to make that, better music. <laughs> <laughs> well, women are making all the best music. Work. <laughs> That was insane. Women running every genre ever. Oh, yeah. The Grammys <laughs> fucking suck. I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. Deborah Dugan. Yeah, there you go. Deborah Dugan. I watched Deborah Dugan on plenty of news outlets, and she was perturbed yeah. at the Grammys. Yeah. That was a big. That was a big thing. Yeah. For me, it was a big thing. Y'all just seemed to gloss right over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it, but it's cool. Uh, what else? What else was big? Big moments. Big moments. Um. Fun moments, or we gonna, do we want to get into the? Well, show? get my yeah, paper. I'll fucking tell you what. No, no, I'm, I know. I'll tell you what was big right now. I just don't know if I want to get us into that place yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we want to go there, we can go there. Where's there? George Floyd. Change, change the the entire year and probably next decade or three. Yeah. Well, that was the one. He, that was that was a worldwide uh, reaction, and that was terrifying and sad and beautiful at the same time. Seeing the rest of the world protest with us. Yeah. People that beautiful. weren't in America, people that didn't really have to because it didn't affect them directly. Right. I thought that was beautiful. Um, it finally felt like that enough is enough thing that I feel like everybody is a, is a sentiment it. that happens after every time we see these unfortunate videos of black men and women being killed by law enforcement. I feel like every time it's been like, yo, this is enough, and then life gets back on track. Right. Mm -hmm. This was the first time where I felt life did not get back on track. At least for a Ch little change while. Change is We've going seen to some happen. Since, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know. I know. I'm not saying it stopped. It, that, it's not fixed. It, for the first time, it felt like, no, we're not going to be quiet anymore. We, we've been through this with multiple names, and I've always felt like people have just moved on after a month until the next one. Yeah. This finally felt like, nope. Not anymore. Yeah. This is going straight to the top with this one. Yeah. And things are going to change completely yeah. off this one. And we're not there yet, but it, it felt that way at least felt like a little a, while. It felt like a, a, a genuine start. Yeah, it wasn't, but it was unfortunate because then shortly after George Floyd, we had Breonna Taylor. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like, you know, you look at, you look at the situation that's going on in the world and then something like that happens. You know, it, it's, it just shows we have a long way to go. But I do like the fact that the world woke up and, you know, we were all had one message. This year one wasn't day. the year that we lost our Dallas guy, both of them, right? That, that was, was last, last year. That was last year. Yeah. Yeah, that was it's last just year. carryover effect yeah. with all of this shit, man. But racism is worldwide, not for nothing. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it may be worse in America because of our history, mm -hmm. but it's, it's everywhere. Well, I mean, it's, it is, everywhere. it's, it's, it's everyone's history, <laughs> you know. Plenty of countries, but... Mm -hmm. But it was it was a beautiful thing to see uh, unification across the globe. Yeah, yeah, it hurts. Un it hurts hearing the word "beautiful" I know. attached to this. I know, and I don't mean. But to I do understand. Yeah, yeah. And, well, the aftermath yeah. and the after effect and the result was powerful. Yeah, and, powerful is maybe and, a better and word. And that and that and that George Floyd stuff seemed to hit so close to home. It's almost like when when somebody you knew caught COVID this year. Mm -hmm. And it changed things for you. Like the fact that Steven Jackson was so close to George Floyd before the world knew about like yeah. it was it was too close to home for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it did feel good to see the world stand up like that. Um, it felt good to hear new conversations being had like defund the police and yeah. just all of these all of these different things. But all of the protests. uh nationwide and worldwide. I think that was a big thing too, that there were protests across the world yeah. for some of the things that were happening in America. Yeah. And that felt good. Yeah. yeah. And granted, like I said, racism is worldwide, so they were probably standing up for shit that's happening in their own country that maybe we aren't as aware of because mm -hmm. they're not as uh, media-driven as America may be. 
or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, it was it was nice to see that unification and very long overdue. Very um, long overdue. Rest in peace, up. George Floyd. Rest in peace, yeah. George Floyd, peace, Breonna, Breonna Taylor. Taylor. Rashad Brooks. Rashad Brooks. Everybody who, who lost life, who lost life this McClain. year. Yes. Mm -hmm. On a much, on a much uh, smaller scale, of course, coming off of that topic, uh, the sports world adjusting to quarantine and COVID mm -hmm. played a big part in the year for me. A lot of our entertainment was affected. Absolutely. It's big time. Absolutely. I didn't think we would get sports at all this year, honestly. I thought it would be... We would get a little week or two or three or four, and then it would be shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've managed to get through a sort of entire season of NBA, a sort of entire, well, most of the season of NFL thus far. They've started the new season, the next season of the NBA. It's, it's, yeah. It started. I know Rory and I was joking around a lot about this, but I felt like at that time, a lot of people were looking to see how the NBA handled this. Yeah to see how they would handle it. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of skepticism, mm -hmm. but somehow they figured out a way. Yo, all of the moments where entertainment found a way yeah. saved the shit out of me going crazy in my house. Nice. Like That's gonna be a reoccurring theme for me. I never thought the NFL would finish their season either. At all. But the fact that they're about there. Yeah, we're close. I mean, my fantasy shit. season is shot to shit. MLB but. too. I, I could have sworn NFL and MLB. I was like, oh, yeah, this isn't going to last another month. I Yo. thought MLB would have the best chance until like three teams got wiped out early on. That is the same thing too. I was like, MLB should be fine. And then the amount of people in the first three weeks, I was yeah. like, oh, they're not going to finish I thought NFL season. would be the one that didn't make it because you're literally in dog piles. Every my people. second man of the year. As we talk, I'm going to figure out my men of the year. What's the fucking pitcher from the Dodgers? Is that Clayton Kershaw? Maybe. The guy that made it to the big dance every fucking year mm. only to not finish the job. One of the greatest regular season pitchers in the history of the game to choke like we've never seen him choke. Mm. Mm -hmm. And they won it mm. with no fans mm. in the stands. Mm -hmm. Clayton Kershaw delivers. Yeah. Nobody is happier than Clayton Kershaw that no fans were in the stands <laughs> for sports. At, yeah, I'll, I'll, seriously. Adam Silver would be also be my I'm, man of the year. Literally uh, just about to say, yeah. Adam Silver has to be up Adam Silver's in it too. And George Floyd, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. I, Adam Silver presidented better than our president. <laughs> they gave like, uh, money to How you teams. got that whole shit through is crazy. They got everybody locked in the house and okay with it relatively, except for Paul George. <laughs> Uh, what other moments were yeah, this the year? Just out of the bubble, <laughs> or didn't you know? Did it in a good way? <laughs> some of them got through. Some of them stuck in. There. Some yeah. of them. Some gave a couple dollars to Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my Left God! Door. We did lose Regis this year. Yeah, yeah. We lost Sean Connery this year. Yeah. yeah. Fred the Godson. Let me just read out the list of names of oh, people that we've lost: Kobe Bryant, Gianna Bryant. Chadwick Boseman, Little Richard, Alex Trebek, Ruth Gin uh, Ginsburg, John Lewis, Eddie Van Halen, Betty White, uh, right, Don Larson, Kenny Rogers, Cliff Robinson. Damn, Cliff Robinson Cliff died this yeah, year. Uncle Cliff, right? Andre Harrell, Andre Harrell <laughs> family, we love you. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Bill Withers, Regis Philbin, Sean Connery, Jerry Stiller, Car Caroline Flack, Naya Rivera, Fred the Godson, Charlie Pride, Black and Mal, Troy Sneed, Pop Smoke, King Vaughn, Mo3, FBG Duck, Nick. This whole year was darkness, sadness. Eugene Farrell. Death. Angie, my grandfather. Right around the corner. Rest in peace to your granddad. Like, Blue Benji Kobe shot in broad daylight weeks after signing a record deal at 24. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's been hard. It was a rough year. It was. I was mixing a Fred the Godson record when he passed. Fred, we miss you and we love you, man. Mm, absolutely. Do we have any more moments that were big? All of the presidential shit was big. Yeah. All of the COVID I mean, stuff was I feel big. Like, I feel like so much of the George our, Floyd things. Our PPE checks. Election. Our PPE checks. That as well. Stimulus checks. The stimmies that did not stimulate shit except for, for the rich. <laughs> Amazon got stimulated pretty good. And Shake Shack. 
Shake Shack. So they gave it back. Yeah. Yeah, the the scammers that enemies. thought of new scams this year, like, oh They're my going God. Going to prison next year, don't worry. <laughs> 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 They're going down. Oh, don't you worry. Oh, man. I love when people think they can, they can they figure it out they how to get past. Yeah, yeah, like the... You think the government doesn't have the best accountants in the world? Okay. They'll How do people commit crimes in 2020 and moving forward? Facts. How do you commit a crime now? Yeah, everything oh. is right here. <laughs> yeah. Around the cameras crazy, that everyone has their house. It's crazy. But like, how you commit a crime and you pay a, a cell bill? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and have the phone on you while you can Having Wi Fi right. and committing crimes. Instagram's listening the whole time. Like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, do you guys want to get into, do you guys want to have a heated debate mm. now or do you guys want to ease into some of this stuff? Mm. Uh, you guys want to get right in the album of the year? I'm okay, done. Most, do most of these shows place album of the year at the end so you guys can listen all the way through. Here at the JBP, we don't really operate like that. I want to get to the fighting early. Let's do, let's it. do it. I have my and pick for album season, of the year. Let's let's do it. Are we we're breaking them up though? You could hip hop, uh, R and B. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd yeah, 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 rather yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's Bad Bunny fall? Is he hip hop or R and B? Like I love Boldy James and I love Kehlani. I just don't know how to put them head to head. <laughs> they shouldn't go head to head. Like, I, let's no. separate them. Rap. Let's do rap. Let's do it. Rap albums of the year. Unfortunately, I have a list in my hand of the rap albums that have dropped. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's been such a memorable year creatively uh, because the year has gone the way it's gone. I've been watching other things with acts outside of how they choose to create music. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm watching how they conduct their business, how they engage their following. I'm watching a bunch of other stuff. But for album of the year. This is the year of the underground hip hop album of the year. Well, shine because they, which, they which, cleaned up no okay. I'm sorry I'm okay. sorry we're starting early we're gonna get yeah. into that but I wanna chop it in the, the head early I love that that happened yeah and a lot of why but that shut happened. up about it oh <laughs> <laughs> yo but Roddy Rich no yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I Roddy Rich like was 2019 the box was still the number one I stream know. song I, that's, in that's, 2020 I, right? that's his retort <laughs> yeah 2019 I, I do love that term backpack and where it came and derived from yeah, this was the year of the music that plays well in your crib. Yeah. Sorry, people that just focus on the club. Yeah. It wasn't your year. And yeah. it shows in the best hip-hop albums this year. Yeah. Even though we flame the Grammys, it, it's representative, the fact it, that it, it Jay Electronica and Freddie Gibbs and Alchemist and Royce are and I wasn't, in the, And I, I don't know if I, we spoke about it on the show, but I wasn't mad at the, the, the Grammys selection for a rap album of the year. Me either. I may either. not have went with D Smoke only because I'm, you know, I wasn't locked in on D Smoke's album like that. He made a good but album. For the most part, just, it still was a good album. Yeah, it was a good album. But you told me it was bad and I didn't listen to it. Guys, I, I think D it was Smoke good. is a talented dude and I think he's gonna have a great career. D Smoke did not deserve to get a Agreed. rap album of the year nomination. Agreed. Grammy. And I don't, and I know I'm just saying, that aside that from that, I wasn't play. mad at the rest of the category. I'm gonna read y'all a list of some of the albums or most of the albums hip-hop that dropped this year. Y'all give me your thoughts. Let's go. At the end of the list. Let's go. Um, we've got Eminem, Music to be Murdered by, Mac Miller Plus Circles. Deluxe. Huh? Plus Deluxe. And the B-side. Lil Wayne Funeral. Circles isn't a hip-hop album. Russ, Shake the Snow Globe, A Boogie with the Hoodie, Worst of 5'9", ba uh, Lil Baby, Lil Uzi Vert, Jada Kiss, J Electronica, Joyner Lucas, West Side Gun, The uh, Baby, Drake, Chris Brown, Young Thug. Future, Freddie Gibbs, Run the Jewels, Pop Smoke, Juice Wear, Logic, Nas, West Side Gun, Big Sean, Conway, The Machine, Young Boy, Never Broke Again, 21 Savage Reason, Benny the Butcher, T.I., Ty Dolla Sign, King Bond, Busta Rhymes, Gentlemen. There's two chains. In there. Two yeah. chains, yeah. That's cool. Future and Lil Uzi. That's cool. Who wants to start it off? Who wants to be bold? Are we oh, starting at five chains, or are we starting at Future one? Future and Uzi, Meg Thee Stallion, Jeezy, St. John, Juicy J, Kid Cudi. Are we, are we doing our, our five? I don't, I don't mind. I'm ready. Popping it off. I'm ready. But you know my shit. Is this so. hip hop? Just hip hop. Just hip hop. No R and B. It, in order, I got number one, Freddie Gibbs, Alchemist, Alfredo. Mm. Number two, I got Conway from a King to a God. Mm. Number three, I have Lil Baby, My Turn. Not bad. Four, I have Stove God Cooks, Reasonable Drought. Not Five, bad. I have Pop Smoke, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon. Mm. I have a whole ten here, but we can. I like those five. actually. We have, we have a lot of similar ones. I had. Uh, it wasn't a singular album, but the, the Ransom and Nicholas Craven crime scenes was my favorite. If you put them all together, it's an album. And that's how I'm going. I don't give a fuck. Uh, number two, I had Stove God. Number three, I had 
uh, uh, Conway. Number four, I had a tie between Freddie Gibbs and Boldy James in Alchemist albums because I like them both mm-hmm. equally. And number five, I don't recall what I had. I'm going off the top of my head. Uh, I think I had Bad Bunny, but that's not him. I, I was going off, by the way, I wasn't mad at, we killed B-Dot, but I wasn't mad at his reasons for judging. Skill, performance, presence. These sure. weren't my personal favorites okay. in order. I went personal favorite. This is what I thought were the five best this year. I don't care about the other shit. I went personal favorite. I had, uh, I had Nas, Stove God, Conway, Freddie Gibbs, Benny, and Royce, the 5'9". Reasonable. That's six, but that, that's, that was, those were okay. my picks. All right, Maul has my exact list. Oh. But Nas gets album of the year for me. I like it. I have Nas at six. So with, yeah, with, Nas is on my with, top ten somewhere. He was in my uh, honorable mentions. With, without question. As was um, Benny and Hit Boy. Well, Hit Boy I, I'll read my, my quick ten from there. Because mention it off that shit. Nas, King Disease, West Side Gun, Pray for Paris, Benny, Burden Approved, Boldy James and Alchemist, Price of Tea in China, 21 Savage, Metro Boomin, Savage. That Boomin. was great. That was in my honorable mentions. But your Boomin. album of the year is what? Freddie Gibbs, Alchemist. Alfredo. Alfredo. Mine's is Ransom, The Scenes. Ransom. Yeah. Uh... From King to a God, Conway. No, I like that. Conway. That was a really good album. Yeah. And uh, Juicy J was an uh, honorable mention for me. Uh, Pop Smoke's other album, the, um, Meet the, the first Wolves one. 2, I believe it was yeah. called, uh, was up there. Shane Noir had a couple good albums that I would put in there. Spillington Village was one of my favorite alternative hip hop albums. I don't know what the fuck you call it. So, all six plus Pop Smoke. I don't know okay, where you Pop put St. John. Because I was going through when I was putting my list together between hip hop albums and R and B albums, yeah. and I was like, Saint John belongs on one of these lists. Yeah. I just don't know what list to put him on. I had him on hip hop, and I don't know if that's right because I, I don't went, consider hip hop at all. I went to go look he on. He belongs app. on the O uh, seven O Shake list. That alternative, yeah, I agree. O seven O Shake had a fucking amazing. Because I was and that was this year. That's one of my yeah. favorite albums to I, drop. That was a great this I, year. I texted Joe two days ago when we was trying to put this shit together. I said, like, "What do you consider O seven Shakes joint because like that was one of my favorite period of the year. Yeah, I don't it's know. Not what, an R&B album. It's no. not. It's an alternative. It's not. Yeah. It's the same way with with Child Saint Synthetic John's Soul. I couldn't album, figure yeah. out where I would put that because it's not even labeled under R and B. It's right. labeled under alternative. Right. Feels R and B to me. What do they have Saint uh, labeled under? Saint is hip hop. No, I think rap, rap and hip hop. That's really? I went to go look. Wow. Because I, I was trying not, to put them on my list and well, I. It's not not rap and hip hop, but it's not rap and. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's in the Kid Cudi category. I feel like, let me give you my reasons for picking Nas. Because the gentlemen that you guys named all did a phenomenal, phenomenal hip-hop job. Contemporary R&B. Contemporary is a hilarious <laughs> They just threw mad shit. <laughs> yeah, he got Yo, this is music. <laughs> yeah, oh no, yes, that thing called music, yeah. I feel like Nas was under a lot more pressure to deliver. Facts. I feel like Nas had the most riding on this specific release. Yeah. Um, it's hard when you have an album that was kind of panned. Yeah. Fairly or unfairly, and, however and, you want to And you acknowledge the panning because he did acknowledge that the Kanye shit didn't go the way he thought it might go. Mm-hmm. But even that, to come off of doing an album with one producer as great as Kanye... And it not go well and say, okay, I'm going to try it again the way that I think it should be done. Mm. And it work out flawlessly. Mm-hmm. And not only that, someone that we don't know publicly, you have had a long relationship with. Say Nas and Preem announced the album. We go, oh, that makes sense. Mm. Right. To go from the Kanye shit and then, has there ever been a Nas hip boy song Hip-hop prior to, to that? Hip-hop couple on the uh, yeah. Lost Tapes 2 and maybe oh, a couple other okay. uh, along the line. But. Yeah, it just wasn't the pick that I would have guessed. I was never mad at it when they announced it, but I was like, all right. I mean, I could have seen a Nas and Rizza tape before I saw a Nas and Hip Boy shit. Yeah. Yeah. So the, to pre- pick the pressure somebody, of that yeah. too, like, all right, what are you trying to do with this? We, we love Hip Boy, we love Nas, but I don't know if I need this. I think it probably took some pressure off of Nas though. Because like, I feel like a Nas premiere album or a Nas RZA album would have so much hype from not just, just I think, their history. I, I, just from I, their I, history. No, I think there was I more pressure, pressure too. Because Hit I, Boy was on a run. That we was didn't the start know. of the run, though. It was the start of the run. That was the start of the run. He had, he had, he had some joints. No, that, could, no, he had some that joints, was not the start of the run. Yes, it it's a as far as the Benny came after and Sean came after, so that was the start of the run. Oh, as far heard, as this year. Not his career run, obviously. Yeah. Got it. His 2020 shit. He had put... 
He had been he on a few joints, huge. few singles that were big for tw- but that 2020 where it was like, oh, Hit Boy is the producer this year. Yeah. Also this year with Nas specifically, like one of my nitpicking gripes with all of you creatives out there was like it's our job to change the world. Mm. Or if not change the world, at least be the voice box to speak for the world changing. Mm-hmm. So this year with so many new elements in the world, I felt just felt like creatively the niggas that was really good with words would have a blast. And yeah. that fell short to me this year. Mm. Like a lot of y'all did what you normally do. Mm. Not Nas, even though, yes, Nas too. Nas did what he normally does, but it was perfect. The timing of the world with what Nas does, it gave me what I needed from an MC and an album, and it was flawless to me. I think Nas, what Nas he, gave he us went was crazy. what we always, well, what the culture always kind of knocked him for was just the production on his album. Yeah, it's, like that's people didn't really always like the production. Nah, he spoke to the times. Yeah, and, and I'm looking for more rappers but, right, to I agree. speak that's to not the times. Unfair knock on us. No, it, it, I agree. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's been the knock. Yeah, no doubt. Not the way he was forcing the times. Like even no, like no, not like forcing. No, no, I'm saying he didn't do that. Like even when I saw the bonus track "Spicy," which ended up being one of my favorite records with uh-huh. Fabio and Ferg, I was like. Do I need a Nas and Fabio song right now? Right. And I it did. was one of my favorite I joints. I, did. <laughs> I think it's the only song that it's, charted from the album. It sounded like it was a bonus. It was, it a, was bonus. a bonus. Yo, now that I'm thinking like about the it. times now, but it didn't sound like Nas was hopping on some shit. Like, all right, who is this old guy that just showed up to the party? Yeah. Like, we could see your old ass in the corner creeping on <laughs> the chicks over here. Leave. Right. It right. didn't feel that way at all. Like, Thanks. he sounded fine on it. True. All the niggas that I'm naming now that we think about, all oh, that mall name, because I didn't name anybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> They impressed me by stepping into them even more this year. Like, Benny did him more. Mm -hmm. Stove God did him more. Mm. Royce is probably my second rapper of the year just because of how he, even he, in year 20-whatever of his career, seemed to step into him more, like found... I'm not sure what the more category. control of his voice. I'm not sure what the category Gibbs, is for Gibbs, Royce. I think Gibbs did that better than anybody. No, nah, Royce. That. Royce had a, a very unique. Yo, how old year. is Gibbs? Hold on, I want to yeah, reply go. to this. How old is Gibbs? I feel like he's uh, probably 30, 34, 34, 34. 34. Uh, yeah, I don't know, and I don't. Oh, uh, then I take my take my point back. Royce, oh, 38. Royce? Yeah, 38. Royce? Oh, okay. Gibbs is thirty-eight. Gibbs is fucking old like us. <laughs> but no, but the, why I say that? Is your point there? Like Gibbs has been rapping this way for over a decade. Yeah. Finally, I feel like Gibbs is getting into his shit as far as creating real records, knowing the producers he just wants to work with, being yeah. very comfortable in the music he's putting out. Yeah. Yeah, I think Gibbs did that more than anybody coming off Bandana last year yeah. and then Alfredo in this year. Facts. Gibbs, think- Gibbs feels the most comfortable listening to records than I think. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what category to put Royce in because lyrically he had one of the best years. His album is one of the best albums of the year, but the fact that he moved into production, producing his old album, producing, I forgot how many crazy. songs was off of Eminem's album, but that's... And that L.A. Leakers freestyle. And the L.A. Leakers, and the LA Leakers freestyle. Yeah. yeah. But that's, why, that's, that's a very happy, interesting That's year. why I'm happy for Royce, though, that this was nominated for a Grammy because he took a, a chance on his music. Yeah. He started producing a lot of his own shit. Yeah. And he had a vision for it. And you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's... And no Bad Meets Evil came out this year. Listen, it's someone who is... no relying with of, on right, right, anything, right, anywhere. Right. Someone who's worked with a lot of upcoming producers and at one point was an upcoming producer myself. The fact that he just started producing and produced at the level that he did in year one right. is insane. Mm-hmm. So I want to just salute him. I'm not sure what category that fits in. Mm-hmm. And I want to shout out, listen, because we're talking about the best, the best our, here. Our, our. Our best, yeah. our best. But there's some of y'all here that put out just good albums, yeah. mm-hmm. and when albums are good, we have this tendency to just ignore it. Mm. Right. But, man, this King Von album was a good, really good album it was. for me. It I, was. I have Reasons, New Beginnings, had it not dropped so close to the Another end of the year, Another good album. Very good album. I feel like it would have made my top five. I just can't. Alex, pull up the list. Like, I, I, need, I need music to live for a little bit before I put it in the, the top five there. category. That's why I feel for all the artists. Like, Reason New Beginnings, October 9th. It's tough to put that in a category when I'm still living with it. And that's why I feel for the artists when it comes list time, even though we all hate it and it's 
it's and there stupid. Was album that was similar to it's it's tough that. when you put some shit out late and expect to be on lists because yeah. I haven't had all year or at least six months to live with it to see how it ages. But yeah. reason to me, that New Beginnings album deserves to be in a top five. Yeah, Juicy I didn't J put it in mind one because it was just too late for me to resonate that it had the impact that it deserved just because yeah. it hasn't been long enough. But reason shit should have been in there. All day. Facts. Um, for me, J was in that for me. For me, no surprise here, but I definitely think that West Side Guns Cray for Paris. All of Griselda shit said. was good this year. Yeah. Uh, All of Griselda shit was good. Hot take, hot take, which I guess isn't really hot take. My personal Pray for Paris was my favorite Griselda drop of this year. And I was the one I'm that came in here and said Burden of Proof was album of the year. I retract my statement. Pray for Paris took my personal favorite of any Griselda drop. I'm not mad at that. It's a perfect album. Mm -hmm. Really good album here that nobody will say because it's not hip to say it. T.I. put out a really good album. Yeah, he, did. he did. He did. Again. Yeah. He did. Mm -hmm. Again. He, he did. 100%. He did. Uh, Sean, Sean, Detroit too. When you, I like going back and hearing albums where I know exactly where that person is in their life. And I liked hearing like calm, peaceful Sean. Mm -hmm. I went back and listened to Detroit too after giving it some time. Mm -hmm. I identify with Sean with so much of what he's saying in this part of his life entering into his 30s and the peace that he's trying to find that he didn't have in his 20s. Like, right. I think if you give Detroit 2 some time, I don't think Detroit 2 will get its credit this year. Or well, first listen, wasn't my shit. Yeah. That's one that you gotta let that live for six months, go back to it. Sean, I gotta go back is, to Sean it. is talking some shit on there. I gotta go back to it. It's a lot of music, but I don't want Detroit 2 to go under the radar or first listen, and even though I don't know what him and B Dot's relationship is, we're gonna get into that. <laughs> yeah. And lastly, on my list of just good, even though this is not the time for just good, but I'll give it to you anyway. All of Twenty One Savage's albums are good. Yeah, yeah. That's, good. He, that's, that's a good project. They're all good. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought Twenty One Savage up because yeah. before they're we got out good. of hip hop, they're I wanted to get into that word presence. Twenty One Savage this year, presence, and I don't want to bring up Chatty House and all that other shit. But part seeing, seeing artists come into their own as personalities and just people within media, because rappers no longer can just rap, disappear, and come back. It's impossible if right. you want to stay relevant in these times. 21 this year made his presence known not only with music, but who he was as an intellect and who he was as a person. Yeah. That is shown this year. He has been part of huge moments in a very positive light. Yeah. Like 21's presence this year, I have maybe number one or two <laughs> as yeah. far as rappers that were involved in this entire year not just with music yeah. of just being around yeah. and, add, and in I'm a positive add, way i'm gonna add somebody to that um me the sure, baby, don't hurt him yeah the, the baby got it don't we put, gotta mention don't put baby. me yet the baby, he had a good year too yeah the baby is one yeah. i'm not I, he didn't put out any. <laughs> we're being too serious though i'm glad you're <laughs> like <laughs> let's, let's joke i'm just saying like no, we're gonna sure, talk about, even, if we're gonna talk about don't artists, even end the list right now with my shit yeah no no you was present we yeah, wish you would have been a little less present yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you was present i'm present now you're present. Yeah, here present. they felt my presence out there but no the, the baby and um saint john for me mm. as other artists to mention in that um presence i didn't year. think you would go there <laughs> You're looking at the list. They got, they got him under hip hop, so let's talk about it. So let's yeah. talk about him yeah, under hip hop. Get the fuck out of here. Listen, You're going to talk about him everywhere, it's, it's huh? They got him under country. It's hip hop. So, one of the Saint, biggest records of the year. Best country album I ever heard. One of the yeah. biggest records Not of the year. Not St. John in that presence outside of music. It was felt. If you, if you was in L.A. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you said presence. You said the word presence. Right. Nah, he, he was I'm present. Yeah. I'm with you. If, if you was on social media, like in the DM, like those back yeah. streets, yeah, the yeah. back alleys of He was of present in the back streets. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. All right, R&B. All right. Rory and Joe, tell us what R&B. Parks, let's toss it to you, baby. <laughs> Who do you feel really outperformed and outdid themselves in R&B this say year? say Rock Marcy. He had one of my favorite R&B albums. Yeah, the way he harmonized with the beat was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ransom. Yeah, special. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> Fucking guy over here. At tenor. Mo, what's up, man? St. John really dominated the R&B world, huh? I mean, it, says, it says contemporary R&B. Right. If we're going to do that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What are we doing? Right. Let's put them in both categories, right. hip-hop and R&B. The truth finally comes out. Parks and Moore don't listen to any R&B. No, I listen to some. I listen to R&B. It's fine. I got my picks. No, no I got my picks. Yeah. He was a Mo actually was listens to more R&B than he leads the world on to believe. No, I'm an R&B thug. Yeah, I actually don't think, I think you like me. I don't think you listen to rap. I listen to rap. I just, I love R&B though. Grizzle. Yeah. 
Griselda. Griselda right. plus Arnold. Yeah. All right, Rory. This and is where. <laughs> and then when, Griselda, then when and Griselda gets on the Free Nationals R and B album, gonna yeah. be crazy. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> You go nuts for sure. when they singing with Joyce Rice, huh? <laughs> that's what make you go crazy? Yeah. No, Joe, that's not what makes you go crazy. No. Sure you know. Uh, when Benny, when Benny get off, no. Oh, it make me go it's crazy. about to get wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rory. With you and I, the R&B heads of, of, this, of this movement. I could just see Maul talking to Shorty on the couch. Yo, the way Benny moved that pack. <laughs> Come on. Yo, you gotta hit the melodies. You gotta hit the melodies. Two years from now, I see Benny trying to add harmonizing into his mix. Mm. Into his hooks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Come on, man. Ray James from Buffalo. It's true. Look, he's just gonna try to keep the content the same. Stepped all on the coke. Like, he's just gonna try and sing some shit like that. You got a little nah, smoky voice there. That's that was not, nice. That let's was not nice. forget that, that Westside had someone tap dancing on the coke, but really tap dancing <laughs> on the song. And I was like, yo. <laughs> Do y'all get it? He's stepping on the blow. I like that we started our R&B conversation with Rock Marcy and Yeah, I'm, I'm off of you and Ma now. <laughs> I have all my I haven't worry. said anything I'm about rap. It's you and I, I'm ready. You the R&B off, heads of the pod. All right. Read off your list? R&B, what we got here is you guys' favorite, Mark, Brent Fayez. He's my guy. Janae Aiko, The Weeknd, Childish Gambino, Party Next Door. Jesse Reyes, Kiana Lede, uh, Division, The Dream, JoJo, Kehlani, Ro James, this Justine. Is just all the R&B albums. Yes, <laughs> Justine Sky, Tiana Taylor, Victoria Monet, Brandy, Bryson Tiller, Trey Songs. I didn't see one of Rory's favorite albums, Ariana Grande, listed here. Because that was not R&B, that was pop. Uh, that was just all smashes. <sighs> That was, that was R&B. That, that was Pete Davidson R&B. What do you call it when it's nothing but smashes? Mm, smashing Pop. me. Rory, I'm... Oh, by the way, this list was conducted by our behind-the-scenes people. Uh, For anyone production. that gets offended that it wasn't said here. Because I feel like even my top ten list was left out of the list. That Jesse they, Reyes and Keanu Day had my favorite R&B albums this year. I love Jesse Reyes and Keanu's albums both this year. Yeah. My, my five in order. I think you guys really underperformed this year. Oh. <laughs> Same job would be number three probably for me. I'm, I'm freestyling this one, so. That, that was, a, a, according to Apple Music, a hip-hop and rap album. I have my, my top, I can give y'all my top 12, but I'll give y'all my top five. Lay some, lay some streets. All right, I'll give, give y'all my, my 10 to 12 instead of my five, just because it's the R&B cast. This is your shit. I'm going to make sure. Yeah. Uh, this is an order. Emotional Orange is one, Emotional Orange is two. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> We did not put anything out this year besides the All That single, which you can get on all DSPs right now. Mm, mm. Though I did want to put my guy Child Synthetic Soul in this, but it's not labeled as R&B, it's alternative, so I didn't add it into this as 0707 Shake, all the numbers. Can't, still, can't spell preparation without Rory. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Is that a hemorrhoid joke? Probably. Preparation H. Man. <laughs> Mad entendres. <laughs> and please don't ask me. <laughs> Didn't even go there. All right. I was on the, the chatty house. They pulled me up to the stage. It was mad podcast. But yo, what's, what's going on with your ass? <laughs> really? Oh, man. And some, some nice woman was like, hey, I don't think he wants to hear that in here right now. I was like, wow, she understands me. <laughs> All right. R&B albums in order. Kehlani. It was good until it wasn't. Give you on, take time. I suppose that was an EP. Uh, Brent Fett. I'm okay with EPs being in the... Album of the year. And what was the name of Kailani's? It was good until it wasn't, which I think is a oh. fire title. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was, was dope. That was good title. cover, too. Give you on, take time. Brent Fayaz, Fuck the World. Division, Amusing Her Feelings. Xavier Omar, If You Feel. Liana La Havis, Liana La Havis. Chloe and Haley, Ungodly Hour. Tiana, The Album. Victoria Monet, Jaguar. Dinner Party, Dessert. Kiana, Let It Kiki. Uh, Alina Perez, It Was Divine. I had, um, I had Brent, The Weeknd, uh, Kailani. Janae, Tiana, and uh, Victoria Monet. Okay. For R&B albums. I like it. And Saint, but he's not R&B. <laughs> I didn't love, listen, this hurts my R&B fan fear to say, I didn't love so much the R&B this year. Really? Not coming off of the 2019 that R&B had. Yeah. And Division. That's another Like one. the R&B in 2019, we was coming, well, I was coming away from that saying, damn, they really outperformed the, the rappers. So R&B has actually for, been on a run for like a decade. 
Oh, the army has not been dying at all. Yeah. But R&B's 2019, great. specifically, like you were saying, so 2019 quiet. was a, a crazy year for mm-hmm. R&B. Like, oh, yeah. To go into the quiet, pandemic yeah. with the year so, R&B had, yeah. It was so tough. this, for me, um, um, I'll get my old nigga shit out the way early. Brandy is a top R&B release for me this year in hindsight. Good project, for sure. Yeah. Was great. And I'm not sure if I felt like that at the time, but in hindsight, it's one of my favorite, one of the better R&B albums this year for me. Uh, Snow didn't come out this year, but Tiana still Taylor. salute to Snow. <laughs> Tiana Taylor's album. Just, just salute to Snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just salute to Snow because you already know the Hopefully vibes. And, well. and it snowed. Yeah. And it snowed. Mm. I see you got the autograph joint over there. Come on, man. Yeah. Right on. in the still, living room. Still in the plastic. Right, <laughs> put, no, it's, it's even touch the record. Right player. next to the candles. It's, it's, it's a little shrinish, man. It's a little shrinish. I don't even have a record player. But I got vinyl over there of snow. You have a little bit of a shrine. Don't do that, uh, straight, man. I can see you over there. Um, what else? What else for me? Tiana Taylor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Really, really good. Yes. Uh, Janae, 07, Janae. 070 Shake. You're not. It's not R and B, but. Man, another there. one. Yes, yes. And here's another one that I don't see listed here. Uh, I like Victoria Monet shit. That was good. But uh, Cleo Soul. Mm. R&B. I'm not hip. What an album. Mm. What what an album. Probably some of my favorite R&B songs on there that came out this year. And just one of the better albums that have yeah. dropped this year. Yeah. Cleo Soul for Bad me. Bad Bunny's R&B, man. Bad Bunny. No, he's not. Uh, he's not. He's definitely. He's not. Not. We don't have a category uh, for bad money. So did you guys ever get into? So we, we have one. More. <laughs> did you guys ever get into uh, the go? The go category? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yes. Among, yes. Among others. Yes. Yeah. 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 A few other ones too. Uh, highest streamed ever category. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you guys ever get into Kirby Sis EP slash no. album? That, that, that I think should be mentioned. Kirby Sis EP was crazy. Okay. I know I do a podcast good. with this guy twice a week, and I have no idea who Kirby Sis is. Yeah. Tell me. I played Kirby Sis. Kirby. Kirby. She's on Sis. my album too. Mm. Um, oh. Yes. Mm. <laughs> oh. Oh, now, gosh, Kirby, darn um, it. Kirby is dope. Kirby, Kirby. I'm with you, Roy. I put all the fire people on my album. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> We're wrong with these. We gotta wait for the album. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I played on the podcast when he I feel like Kirby says, Yo, Joe, really if you were to make an album right now, you would wait, definitely do the wait, same wait, shit. Who the fuck that? out of here? Oh, no, don't mind. Somebody he did it already. Yeah, and Mo is secretly doing exactly the same yeah. shit. They get their jokes off. Did nobody hear that? Yeah. Kirby Sis is really but dominated. No, no, no. no, Sis the is the charts. name of her EP. Her name is Kirby. The shit is called Sis. Her name is not Kirby Sis. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby wrote for Rihanna, Usher, Mad People, and now is doing her own career. And work. She has an amazing I'm, I'm going to check for Kirby, but yeah, we gotta check I ain't think that the year in r- I like wrap that, up I like that album. is where I would learn about her. I played her on the podcast. Yeah, I, like I played We Don't Funk uh, on the podcast when it came out. I can't wait to check it out. Honestly. No, Kirby is fire. Her voice is super unique. She's yeah. really dope. She belongs on R&B 2020 list Yeah, why are sure. all the uh, chicks with the super unique vocals or like the songwriters for everybody else? That's a good question. That's where they go to get the sauce from. Yeah, yeah. Gotta That's the a thing. From, yeah. That's the thing. Like all the songwriters have super unique voices mm-hmm. and then someone buys all their records. And I feel like I want to mention... You a reference and you're like, wow, they should have kept this for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> right. For about a thousand James Fonsworth references. Like, yeah, your voice sounds better on this. Yeah. I feel like I want to mention her in this conversation, but, but I'm you, not. But the, she didn't have like an album, but she put out a lot of dope singles. Not, huh? But the Grammys already did it, right? Mm. <laughs> her going to find, find her place on the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> Even if nothing come out. Facts. Shout out to Jeff Robinson. <laughs> yeah, y'all loved it when Janelle Monet was doing it, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, every year, Parks gave me there like, oh, Janelle Lene. She's fired. <laughs> and she's going to perform in a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that tuxedo. I think I was going to watch for Janelle Lene, but I'm going to wear it. stupid fans made Janelle Monet go put a dress on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a vagina dress. <laughs> yeah. I was talking about when she dressed like James Bond that really got me going <laughs> holy shit y'all made Janelle Monet start thirst trapping you fucking stupid fans <laughs> let people just be themselves I'm not mad at her thirst trapping let That's people great. be themselves yes, she great. wants to wear a suit just let her wear a suit yeah. she looks good in a suit she's fine that way off of Rory's reference track point I just want to make a suggestion I think that the reference track singers need to start being acknowledged. Facts. 
Because they, they'd be yeah. better. They just don't have the name. Yeah, yeah. I do. Or like the mix engineers that like, put the extra better on them. Or the mix engineers that are really the producer that made the record way better. Like, yeah, yeah no, I, you picked a sample, bro, but that engineer chopped everything up yeah. way better than you. <laughs> I know the reference singer thing might kind of be akin to the ghost writer thing in hip hop where you try to keep that a secret a little bit, but nah, reference singers. Man, just start snitching on these niggas. Not for nothing. I knew no, Keanu. Start, leak, start leaking your shit. I knew, yeah. I knew Keanu Lede as a reference singer way before oh, I knew yeah, her as, a, as she's an artist. A great writer. She came out this year with one of the best R&B albums of the year, so that says something. Yeah. Okay. Yes. With that. Yeah. Uh, and I know we mentioned it when you were uh, listing off all the albums. Bryson Tiller Anniversary, I'm not saying it came and went. I just don't think it got what it deserved. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Rory. That was a really I'm good with album. Rory on this Tiller tape. Like, it was going to circle back. I saw some hate, and then I was late. By late, I mean like a week after maybe is when I, I listened to it. And I was like, wait, what is my timeline talking about? Mm. This album is really fucking good. Front to back. I couldn't find a fucking skip. Mm. That Tiller album is re- That's the type of Bryson Tiller that we're asking for. So, so what is there to hate to about? This is the Tiller we like. I'm not mad at that. I got to circle back no, to a couple albums. I'm with you on the Tiller tape. That Bryson Tiller album is really Yeah, that was a good album. It was. And I'm gonna shout oh, out. I'm gonna shout out uh, uh, Sorrows on that Tiller album. It's probably one of my favorite R&B songs to come out mm-hmm. this year. Uh, I also want to highlight uh, Justine Sky with that fucking record oh, that I love. Her, uh, her album was that. Really good. Also, the pair with me yeah, yeah, it was good. You know, yeah. Justine Sky. Is, is I've good. liked every picture of her since that album came out. Yeah, her, might, and after. her might have one one of the best R and B songs this year with Damage. Damage, Damage was yeah. fire. Yeah. That's one of the best R and B songs. Shout out to Cardi. It was on Obama's uh, yeah. playlist. Oh, was it? No, but it was I on. Didn't, I didn't see it. It was on Malls. No, but it was on Malls. Yeah, first. It was on Malls. Yeah. Where do you think Barack got it from? Exactly. Oh, from, my bad, from Maul. Hey, cool. Griselda. Um, oh. I don't know if he falls in R&B, but sort of with the St. John shit. Don Tolliver for 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hate to be like, yo, he's next up, and that's the guy. 2021. Go ahead and do it. He's yeah, going to be that guy, yeah. man. He's going to be that guy Don in 2021. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> can't believe you did it. He's fired him. <laughs> he's going to no, be that great. guy. Hey. 2021 is going to be a Don Tolliver year. I'm with you. Oh, we're giving our 2021 predictions I, now? I didn't Woo! plan on it, but... We fell into it because he he was on a lot of great fe- features this year. Yeah, he was. The, the Jack Boys. Was that this year or last year? Mm-hmm. Jack Boys. Tata was the top of this year, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Wasn't Takashi's release this year? Huh? Yeah, it was. Who? That was a big moment for me. That was a big moment for me, a big moment for y'all, and a big moment to all of the people that made bets with me when he was in about how his career would go when he got out, and, and y'all won't talk to me about it today now. Rory was one of those people. Uh, I don't remember Rory's Rory th- take. Rory said that no. he would be. My take was that he will come out and be just fine. Start the whole I ratted, so what? And the kids will still love him. Well, I think we all kind of thought that would be his angle. I no. ratted, so what? Well, no, I said I, it would it would work when yeah. he came out. Now, would that be a career for him? No, it didn't work. But it didn't work. It didn't work. It worked. No for matter a how we slice it, it didn't work. It didn't work. Listen, I don't want to make this the the Takashi hate hour because I think that's cheap and it easy shouldn't be. and yeah. stupid. It's a big part but, of the year. But, but I will say, I did appreciate that this did show the world to some degree that the sensationalism, the trolling, the only IG techniques. Finally, we can prove, we have tangible evidence that that does not equal you being a great artist or someone that will sell. There's just a cap I was on so it. happy to it. see, now I don't want to see the downfall of anybody, no matter what their lifestyle is, that's not what I'm here for. But I was so happy just to see that trolling techniques, finally in 2020, we can say, they don't always equal to success. It's they only they only equal to moments and attention. Right. And attention is very fucking cheap because we're going to move on to the next moment and yeah. the next thing we want to put attention to. Yeah. I was so happy to see that bullshit does not always equal success in times where it appears that bullshit is going to equal success, not only in music, but look at the fu- turn on Fox News and CNN and our president. Look at it looks like bullshit <laughs> is going to equal success yeah. and trolling is going to equal success in sensationalism is going to equal success. Even though Takashi is a small part of that, I was happy to see that, yeah, all right, he did get the most views ever on YouTube of someone coming out at some time yeah. because we all want to see the car accident. Yeah. There's no longevity in that. Yeah. You're going to be chasing a moment every single time. I remember my, my reading... Take, my okay. take was people are trying to kill him, so it's going to be expensive to move around mm. 
And it's going to take a whole lot for you to be able to make that worthwhile to somebody. I don't think it'll be worth the investment at some point. That was my take verbatim. And some people that shall remain nameless counter that with, yeah, well, a big part of what I thought would be his success was the touring. And touring stopped with quarantine. Guess what? I don't care. I don't care. Every artist in the world has had to figure out how to move around and navigate with all the new circumstances, with whatever they brought to the table. If that involves snitching on gang culture or whatever it is, then that just involves that. Yeah. But I don't think that the, the, the stopping of touring is what did it for him. Yeah. I think he put, out, put an album out, didn't bring back the numbers that weren't moving around that way, and he's been quiet ever since. Yeah, his numbers weren't terrible. No, they, they were just weren't. terrible right. for... In the scope of things. Terrible, terrible for somebody that... <clears throat> Cost that much to move around. He, One. What do you do? 50, 70, 50, something? 50,000, like 49,000, 50,000. Yeah. He was <laughs> also on record mad times clowning the niggas that were doing 50,000 no, a week. Yeah. Doing more than And some more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the bottom line is he lost the superpower, which was the support and the backing of hip hop culture. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? He didn't have that look anymore. He didn't have the streets behind him. He didn't have that allure, that energy around him anymore. And once he was stripped of that, we just got what seemed like a Cause ongoing the, commercial. Because the people that were pro him before he got out were saying, hey, it don't matter that he snitched. It don't matter what uh, that culture really thinks of him. He's in middle America now. He's big enough to where he can do anything. And I was saying, I don't think that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's true at all. I remember reading an article uh, during the pandemic that I think it was Rolling Stone that broke down the statistics of music that was accelerating versus music that was not doing well during the pandemic. And it was mostly like acoustic music or like underground hip hop music, stuff that's a little bit more like real life as soul, opposed to sensationalized soul, timeless soul, soul music. Yeah. Replay value and, and I think that, that actually connect with people. Like to I the point. That factors in. The point that Maul made earlier in this episode with the August Alsina and Will Smith thing, I think resonates with the Takashi thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, of course, you going through a federal case and snitching and going through this entire thing. Of, yeah, when you come out of jail, we're all going to look right away. Yeah. <laughs> Does that resonate into selling music? No. We're yeah, looking at the moment good. of, all right, here's the rainbow-headed kid that wasn't a street kid that got caught up in a RICO trial, snitched on everybody, and came out and said, yo, I'm a fucking rat. Fuck y'all. Of course the whole world is going to look at that. But yeah. now your rollout is becoming more important than the music. Yeah. And when the music s- suffers, the sales will suffer. Yeah. Nobody was watching that Takashi video when he came out like, oh, I can't wait to hear what type of music he makes. Yeah. No, we're looking at him with the, the fucking star tenders painted up with the fucking mouse emoji over his face. Right. That's what people were paying attention to. I'm not going to go buy his album. I'm not going <laughs> to fuck what music he makes. <laughs> Your rollout is more important than your music. And, and the music better be fire. <laughs> the music better be fire. I left the Chatty House stage just yesterday when I saw one of them Takashettes. Takashettes. Make, make their <laughs> I said, yo, fam, and wait, is this? <laughs> wait, am I on this stage? Man, don't give me the fuck off this stage. Yeah, that's why I can't. No, I sir, can't. Reed, Bob, not the Takashettes. No. I remember the wigs and shit. Nah. I remember Akon. I, I saw your face under the red wig. <laughs> I, know, I knew who he was. I remember You've given me Patron straight before. I know you. I remember Akon <laughs> sitting at that piano, too. I didn't forget about that. The what? Akon sitting at that piano. I didn't that was clown that. shit. Yeah. That, that was, was clown shit. And then, and then Akon got on... Uh, no, y'all hating on the Locked Up remix. <laughs> get it? No. They both were locked up? No. And, uh, all right. uh, and they were trying to get, get out. I don't get oh. it. Oh. No. Yeah, I didn't do the science there. No. And then and then Akon got and went on that whole press run. And I listen, I didn't check the stats, but I do just have a brain. And he was like, Well, everyone knows that ninety five percent of the people that are locked up right now are snitches. And I'm like, I don't think that adds up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Ninety five of percent of look, yeah, prisoners look, snitched and yeah. stayed in jail. Yeah. Ninety five uh, of the people in jail. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Yeah. Like, that was his whole press. Like, why y'all mad at Takashi? Yeah, 95 I'm not, I'm not a street dude, dude, but that just seems off. Yeah, no, that wasn't a good I'm one. not a street dude or a mathematician, but I do have a brain. <laughs> you just know that Akon didn't belong in the studio with Takashi. Just leave it at that. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, that's I'll it. Take that. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. 
Uh, where do y'all want to go next? Top what of the year? Producers? We, go producers? we do producers, yeah. I'm with producers. Producers. Park, Park's had a good list. We was talking off mic. I went, and I think the first two are probably interchangeable to a lot of people. I went Greg Alchemist. Greg McElroy did, oh. Alchemist, Hit Boy. Uh, who did I have third? I had th- Rock Marcy third. Uh, I had 38 Special fourth. And I had 808 Mellow fifth. 808 Mellow did uh, a lot of Pop Smoke stuff, Fabio Four, and that was last year. But mm-hmm. he introduced a sound that expanded this year. Got it. So he's got to be there. To me. To me. Yeah, um, Hit Boy. Hit Boy, you, I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, Alchemist. Um, Royce has got to be an honorable mention, which is, again, crazy for the first year of producing. Yeah, Royce for sure. Uh, Fallen, he did a lot of, um, he did a lot of St. John stuff. I think he's a, he's, a, he's a producer that I think a lot of people in 2021 never, are going to run to. Never thought you would say that. Yeah, <laughs> no, he, he, Fallen is dope. Um, 38 Special. Derringer. Derringer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you hear these two old Who nah, you got, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe? I just want to know if you can uh, hear them. The, uh, All right, I'm doing the same thing they're doing. Set, set, Listen, Trey Button really got, got his shit off this year, uh, man. Set the, set, My mom. Set in the kitchen. Look that up, Scream Man. I don't want to say his name incorrectly, but he did a lot of the, the baby shit. He did the baby Roddy Rich record. Jetson? No, but Jetson did a bunch of shit, too. Yeah. Seth in the Kitchen, I want to say his name is. This is why I said we should have prepared, and you guys laughed me out the room. Uh, We're going to use that term again. When I said, hey, maybe we should, yeah. maybe we should prepare for this. Nah, we don't got to prepare. Chill, <laughs> young prep. Don't yeah. snitch. Seth, Seth in the Kitchen. Come on, 6 9 made it hot this year. It's 2020. Uh, um, Seth in the Kitchen killed shit this year with, with the mm-hmm. poppy shit. Come on, who did all Post album? <laughs> <laughs> Give it to us. He did Broken by Joe, so he knows. Who? Oh. I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, post is last year anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. Listen, it's hit boy for me. Yeah. I think reasonable. I don't. I don't have a long list. It uh, was. It was hit boy. Even when I wasn't trying to find out who it was, he just kept smacking me in the face the entire year with just different shit. I love the Benny joint. Yeah. I love the Nas joint. Mm-hmm. I love what he did with Sean. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I might be privy to some more shit he has coming. Like, it just don't seem like he's stopping no time soon. Oh, Hitmaker. I mean, Berg is gonna... Yeah, Berg always gonna be there. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, it's another, another year... Who else we friends with? <laughs> I think... Who else? Niggas. Who else? Who else? Dope niggas. I think this year and probably like the last three or four, since we're not gonna get into name names on this... The idea of the in-house producer, like if you go look at the credits of an album and you see a majority of a name you don't recognize, but they're on 95% of the album, yeah. has kind of came back. Like, I don't know much about Uzi and how he creates music, but I went to the credits and I saw the same few names every single time. Yeah. Like it's not, the super producer still exists, of course, but I kind of love that people have their own little camps and inside shit where yeah. it's like, you know, he's going to be on every single record. I only make music with this guy, and I'll send it out to a Metro Boomin to work on the drums. Yeah. But send it right back. Yeah. Like, the in-house shit, I, I like that. Or I, I got a better beat Metro come. Boomin, but I needed a bridge, or I needed, you know, something else in the chorus. Or the whatever. in-house producer, I, I think the albums are better I that agree. way. Then it's, let me I go. the year the Metro had, and Mad Lib, too. But, I mean, I expect both of them to just. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Metro had another Metro year. That's why I'm saying, yeah. like, we don't talk about Quietly, it. He just does it. This is a quiet that's what year, but he when did you're it. That good. How it go from you doing that much and it's still quietly? <laughs> right. <laughs> Consistency. Yeah. Like Metro just here. That all 21 the time. Savage album was great. It was great. Yeah. It was great. Um, pardon my naivete or my ignorance here. It's a that's this, key. Another this name. might be a mistake. Sure, yeah. Fuck these niggas up, Tiki. Yeah, Tiki. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This this might be a little ignorant of me. All of the all of the producers that contributed to the good drill, eh. I appreciate y'all. Now I'm not so for sure, I'm yeah. not so aware, so I don't know who all these people are. But man, y'all are fucking geniuses, man. And a lot of that is in house, like they man's in them. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like my introduction to drill is maybe my first drill record I heard and liked a lot. I said, oh, this is hard. They can't keep doing that. And I've kept, <laughs> I kept saying that. Yeah. Just, and, just say Axel. Yeah. Yeah. 808 Mellow, too. 808 Mellow. Too. Oh, Super Mario body this year. I meant to add that. Mm. Fam, oh, sorry. all of y'all 
I love all of it. I love the London shit. I love the Chicago shit. I love the New York shit. Mm -hmm. I'm conflicted because of what it may mean for us. Mm -hmm. But creatively and just musically, sonically, all of y'all who did the good drill, mm -hmm. peace up, A-Town down. Yeah. Yes. That, that's how you want to end that segment? <laughs> That was a stamp you put on drill. He's up, A Town Down. <laughs> that's what you, you were that's, 40. That's what you wanted to do? I should have said that 15 years ago. Um, yeah, that's what I got. That's what I got for our producers yeah, of the year. I like it. I like it. And apologies to everyone that's gonna be upset. For sure. That we didn't mention Because it's name. gonna happen. Uh, yeah. And like, yo, how y'all not know this? Why do you have this platform and you didn't know about this guy that did it? I didn't ask for this I think platform. this should be the Grammys, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what they forget. I, I, I did not know that this would I fucking take off. Yeah. I didn't know this yeah. was it. I was sitting across from Marissa and Joe. <laughs> I didn't think yeah. I'd be I didn't telling think you who the was, best yeah, producers of 2020 would be. Yeah. And, then, and then you would be listening. <laughs> hey, I told you, what do y'all think? Yeah. DM it to me. Yeah. I think that this should be the Grammys over where we just say a bunch of names and no definitive answer. Yeah. <laughs> these are the potties. Yo, these people are all fire, man. Yo, that's what, <laughs> thanks for showing up. <laughs> well, now, I mean, do y'all want to get into maybe who you may have been disappointed with this year? Sure. <laughs> List of grievances? No, I don't know. Let's degree. <laughs> I'll take us to the next level. Todd Allen. Damn. Okay. I think I'm, I'm, a, lot, a lot of people I feel was, like that. I was very, very disappointed. I was ext extremely anticipating that mm. featuring Todd Allen album. We all were. I loved the title. I said, oh, he bodied he body, the it. name of the title. is is on. He did. Yeah. yeah. And it was not. I, I felt like I got, what, what are the chicks doing now? The photo dump? <laughs> I felt like I got a hard drive dump mm. from Ty Dolla Sign. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it was like, nah, I see the way you, like, I see the way you put that together. Here's just a bunch of shit that yeah. is on my hard drive. And of course it's great. Yeah. And of course those, those women look good. Yeah. Every photo is going to be dope. Like, right. You look good. Right. I didn't need all 25 of yeah. these. I, I, I need like your best. <laughs> <laughs> your best 12. <laughs> I'm, and that rumor that Joe started, if there is the real Todd Allen album and he just had to get this off to get out of some contractual shit or he was just doing this, I'm still, I still have faith. Todd Allen to me is still one of the greatest artists of our generation, one of my favorite ever, but I was very disappointed this year. All right. And guess what? That, guess yeah. what? It doesn't matter, Ty. You're going to be fine without my opinion. <laughs> All right. Since Rory is shooting the baseline three again with ease, I'm going to follow up, man, and say something that's going to hurt my heart. Mm. I'm gonna say something that I shouldn't say. Because mm. I have an amazing relationship with this person. This person one of my favorite people in, in the music business. So this hurts me more than it's gonna hurt them. Charlotte. No. Oh. Rory. Academics. I was tight at Roe James. I was. Mm. That okay. one that one hurt me. Okay. Not that it wasn't good. Right. But we talked. But about it's that. not what I waited four years for. Mm -hmm. But I think we talked about that. And I keep talking time. about the niggas that make you wait four, five, six years, and then what that comes with. Mm -hmm. Like, and Roe is somebody I told all through the four years. Yo, where's that? We waiting? Like, give it to us. Yo, the greatness take time. I get to understand all that, but the time I waited for what I received. For what I know his talent to be, mm -hmm. not acceptable for me. Not acceptable for me. Ro, you know I love you. But I mean, I, well, I'll you call you and tell you okay. this before this comes out. <laughs> of course, of course, with the consumers, yeah, you only care about what the final product is, not what was happening behind the scenes. But like, yeah, Ro was going through management changes. Man shit. shit. Like, Man shit. Like I even saw that with they this year with their project that I'll snitch. It was old. It was on an old, it was from a different label. Mm. Trying to get them off that label and still put out that great music, but it was dated. I have a whole fucking They album in my phone before the, this one dropped. Right. They were going through a lot of shit. Like they were sitting on music and was like, let's just get this out so I can move the fuck on. Mm -hmm. right. Even though it's good, it's still not the way you want to present yourself sometimes. And I, I feel like Ro that. with that. Yeah. Like Ro went through a bunch of shit and because you're a fan, you waited four years, like, all right, let me feed my fans at least because they want to hear something. I have these records. No, if y'all don't give a fuck about the music, not talking about Roe, but if y'all, the artists, are not giving a fuck about the music, then find a way to tell me. Well, that's, not what, I, that's not what I was saying at all. 
uh, just you're trying. If you're to not going to put your best your foot forward. If you are making music that is based on something else, like trying to get out of a deal or some shit, yeah. tell me, man. Yeah. Tell yeah. me. That's reason. I'm gonna still ride with you as a fan. But you, but you understand that because you're a very savvy <clears throat> sumer outside of you have been an artist. Like, imagine Ro James saying to his fans that literally just are fans. Like they drive to work and listen to Ro James. That's what they sit with their girl or their dude and listen to Ro James. Hey man, I'm going through label problems and management problems and this Here's is my some shit. Like they're gonna be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Dude, I just I listen to music on an app in my phone and I happen to like you. Right. Like they're no I would never expect an artist to try to explain that to the casual fan and a majority of your fans are casual fans. They're not savvy fans. Yeah. So yeah, I like even when, when they was putting out their album and we were having that conversation, I'm like, the fans, they want music. They're not going to listen to, yo, we was trying to get off Warner and now we're going over to Island and it's been a fucking nightmare to try to get this and this has been sitting here on a hard drive. Like, I, we just want to give you this music. They don't, no, they don't give a fuck. I they have just a long, hear the music. I, actually, the more I sit here and think about it, so we should move on. I have a long list of you niggas that I'm, I'm a little surprised I have a weird at list or of mad at. Like, I, was, I, I was a little disappointed in Big Sean. Big Sean. Okay. That's reasonable. I was a little disappointed in that um, only because we know what the first Detroit album was. Yeah, my, and, my um, favorite Sean project ever. Yeah, yeah, when we got when we found out Detroit Two was coming, I think my expectations were a little higher, and um, I don't think the album met those ex- expectations. I'm just being honest. I love Big Sean, but this album wasn't what I thought it would be. I agree. I agree. Give, give it. I'm with you I, on I had, the same, I had the same sentiment, and I, I'm repeating myself from 30 minutes ago. Give the Sean album like six months and go back to it. I have a really strange uh, grievance because this album is both my f- one of my favorite albums and one of my most disappointing albums, and that was the Nas and Hit Boy album. Nas is my favorite rapper ever, and it, he did a very good job in the album, but he didn't take me to where he, I know that Nas can take us. Mm-hmm. Uber, nigga. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Take Cardi, tar- tar- Cardi Fox. It hurts, I know. It's a very weird thing. It hurts me. Too. It's a weird so it's thing. It's a love hate. It's a love hate. Okay, got it. Because I really enjoyed the album. I love the content you gave us right, and everything. Right, but then when it. I hear like the Swiss song from last year, it's like that that Nas is like a different part. He never gave me so that. so underground that he hates when the greats give us music because they're no longer underground. He hated Jay giving us the most introspective, uh, mature. I showing how hip hop can be. I love the, I love the he, content. He hated Kendrick, who has not missed. He may have a higher percentage than any rapper ever, as far as uh, discography goes at the at the moment. I hated I that. Have high standards. Nas for finally gave us a, a cool album after we didn't like Lost Tapes two, and the, the Kanye one. Parks, unless you underground, unless you ran. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> Listen, man, it's a weird, like I said, it's a weird I'm space because t- it's one of my shit. top 10 albums of the year, but at the same time, it's like I want Nas to like really give us that Nas okay. shit. So you should talk to your buddy, you know, that guy. Did you hear uh, Car 95 talk to or whatever I, I, I like, should do an album. I like, a, I like several songs on that album. Like I said, it's one of my top 10 albums of the year, but at the same time, he didn't take me. You never rode in Car 95, That's though. That's true. 85. That might be true. 85. I didn't either. Yeah. Oh, so y'all not going? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's cool. Call, call, call from the bridge. That's cool. That was, that was your, I, that yeah. was your taxi service. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> um, best features. Uh, yeah, I got I got a little I list. A couple. I got a little list here. Nipsey on Sean album would have to be. I, I have featured. Nipsey on Big Sean. Deep Reverence as my number one. Um, I have Hove on J Leg. Universal Soldiers as number two. I have Wayne on Benny. Timeless as number three. I have Gibbs on West Side. Five hundred ounces as number four. Hmm. And I have Vince Staples on Boldy Surf and Turf as my number five. Interesting. Well, damn. (laughs) All right, Maul, what you got? (laughs) I like that. Um, I actually like this. I like this Drake uh, feature on Young um, Young Blues on record. Your mind still. I think. Bring Drake to the hood. I think. (laughs) So now, nah, by the way, we got to throw Dirk's Surround Dirk's yeah. Drake's with Drake's. Dirk's feature on Laugh Now, Cry Later was great. Even was though I crazy. got a case, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I'm going to do what it takes. But it is hilarious to, to sit, like, try to sing, let's bring Drake to the hood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Conway and Juicy J. I got album. Dirk. On, the Firm on Nas' album was, my, I know it's not a single artist, but 
AZ, for hearing that's the That's my future of the year. AZ. Oh, no, I, AZ. Yeah. Wow, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. AZ might have. No, might your have. list is over. You didn't, no, you didn't say it. <laughs> you named mad shit but AZ on. A- AZ might have had the best. Met feature. the man on Lemon with Conway. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I know it's a kind of a collaborative song or whatever, but Mag on WAP, mm-hmm. that was a the biggest song of the year, probably. You hear him, you guys? <laughs> whatever. We got, we no, got I agree with you. <laughs> I just want to I just wanna get them to clown you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Parks was the first one to mention WAP. Hey, whatever. Parks you got to balance. Wop. You got to balance. WAP is one of the better collabs this year. It's I don't probably the fuck. biggest song of the year. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I don't know if it's a probably. Judge me. Involved. Y'all judged me and Parks for saying Cardi had album of the year two years ago, yeah. and we're back with a WAP take. WAP is fuck probably you. the song of the year. Um, uh, they, y'all going to kill me, but Future on uh, the Roses remix. St. John, Future's up. Uh, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, that feature was hard. Kendrick on Buster's album was fire. Look over your shoulder. He loves this record. I don't know why he looking like yeah, that. Yeah, he, he, loves, he, he sure. loves this record. <laughs> nah, but it is, though. It was a hard fucking feature. Like, what yeah. you, it, listen, it's great music. What do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> 42, you know, 42 Doug on Lil Baby We Paid was great. <laughs> Oh, you're so hip. You're in touch with the youth. <laughs> now, you know he went and Googled a youth pick. <laughs> that is hey, a hard record, though. What are the kids listening to? Your list. <laughs> well, that's a hard record, though. Yeah. What are the that youths listening to? You know he went and asked his little cousin, hey, Tommy, what are they playing in school? <laughs> Wait, what? That's racist. Why my little cousin named after Tommy? <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> All right, what happened? F me. Why, why my little cousin's name can't be Andre? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> why that gotta would, be Thomas? That would be appropriation. That's not beyond y'all. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. What'd you say? To- what, yo, what, <laughs> which is sick because I'm sure Andre is a name. Never mind. I was going to do a, go. do a, a really know. bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Andre is a name. Never mind. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just what are we on? Features? Features. Yeah, Come on, features. What, Summer Walker. What's up? Yeah, what's up? No, what's up, dude? <laughs> why y'all <are you laughs> down tapping me? Uh... Where was snow at that you didn't expect it to be? Uh, what'd you think about Michael B. Jordan featuring in the snow? Mm. Video? He ain't like that shit. I don't like that. No, he, ain't like that. <laughs> he ain't like that. I ain't like that well, one bit. I like you shit on last lap. I ain't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with Parks on WAP. Uh, Nature on the Nas album. I mean, not Nature. I'm, I'm okay. sorry. AZ. Okay. Like hey, they all killed. You like but... Janae on body language? You wasn't feeling that one? <laughs> I'm just asking a question, man. So. AZ on uh, AZ on the Nas joint, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dirk on everything. Dirk, has Dirk good on year everything good year for me on the feature tip. Mm-hmm. So in touch with the youth. Listen, I. You know what's funny? I don't feel I don't connect with Dirk on my trying to be you full shit. I like the melodies. Yeah, no. and shit. Dirk. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I had to fucking defend myself because I was self conscious. <laughs> 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 Listen, I, this isn't a category, but but Sweetie. Oh yeah, Sweetie Word of the Year. Oh. Goes to Sweetie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Sweetie won Sweetie of the Year. Just, just, just year. Sweetie. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's yeah. just what I gotta yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, who else? Yeah. Like Sweetie just featured on Life. Yeah. She was well, like yeah. really well versed in in Life this year. Yeah. She did like that. Visuals of the Year. Yeah. Psst. Sweetie. Psst. So Sweetie wins Wifey of the Year. I think. Um, I think Mulatto wins Uncancelable of the Year. Like, boy, did they try. Yeah, that should bounce didn't work. after. Yeah. Like, how, how did she beat Harvey Weinstein with, like, the power structure there? <laughs> how Mulatto won? <laughs> we got to get into the who got canceled and who really didn't get canceled. Was there a big thing with trying to cancel Mulatto? For, like, a, a, a 24 hours. Yeah. The way canceled. They, yeah, they, were trying to camp, camp, they were trying to cancel her because she said, yo, man, I think I'm going to change my name, man. It was offending some people. Yeah. <laughs> and then they got mad at her <laughs> for her for name, considering she it. said, hey, I think this might be wrong. Like, you fucking right, it's yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, if I'm no, giving an uncancelable award to somebody, it's going to JT from the City Girls. Man, your tweets have been a mess. <laughs> them old tweets. I don't know how you got from up under some of them chicks. <laughs> Yo, and you addressed them not the best way either. You're like, yeah, I said them yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's the best way to do it. Y'all keep digging them up. But yeah, she went crazy on the old tweets. But we love JT, so it didn't matter. She looks great. Salute to JT. Yeah. Glad that you were unable to be canceled. Women, women, again, 2019, we talked about it. 2020, women kind of ran rap again. They did pretty, they, yeah. They, they, they were up there. They were up there. They were up there. 
No, they killed it again. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's not leaving. Yeah. Underground and overground. Shay uh, and Armani were amazing. Flo, Flo Millie was amazing. Flo Millie. Mm-hmm. Sweetie. Uh, Flo Millie, yeah. The women. Rico Nasty, Bia, Malibu. For the Grammys to not have mentioned any Rhapsody of the women Rhapsody. is really blasphemous. And Bida. Yeah. And Bida. The Grammys and Bida are kind of wild. <laughs> if there's something wrong in the culture. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bida. I love you. So, I'm, yeah, joking. No doubt. I'm joking, Bida. Yeah. <laughs> be my guy. Yeah. Anyways. Meg should be on some well, tempo. Who else some, got, some list. Who else Someone's got canceled list. besides Duce Palooza this year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, y- y'all was the only one. <laughs> hey, my hey, hands been great. Hey, my hands kind of walked out of there clean. Hey, my hands body they shit, man. They came for your neck too, Joe. So. Oh, what a uh, year! They came for your neck too. We got to give you a little yeah, bonus for work. Hey, they tried me. Yeah, they, tried. they tried to cancel the boy. Don't, don't try to get caught. So, my dick. Like me. You hung up like me. It was only by the grace of God and by my dick <laughs> that y'all couldn't do shit with a big stepper. You heard? A big stepper. What the fuck is wrong with you, niggas? You are so old. Now, for 20, I don't know what. what I actually uh, feel like we shouldn't edit any of that. <laughs> Why are we editing? Yeah, Just no. be humble. Yeah, be humble, right? All right. <laughs> I humbly admit that you niggas can't stop nothing over here. <laughs> They're gonna bring that clip up when it's No, no, no. It's, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. But they did they did try to get me out the paint for a little bit. They did. They tried to get Drew Brees out of here too. And no, nah, no, he's out of the paint. Sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he was a real sack of yeah, shit. What he did? What he did, out of there. He, what he, did he gave he out MAGA hats to his daughter. He said stop your kneeling. <laughs> Yeah, stop you kneeling, you son of a bitch. Stand, stand up. Stand for the flag. Stand up for this great flag of this, of this nation. Uh, man, sorry, Drew. Said, you got to say All of the, said, all of the top, he... stop the kneeling quarterbacks, Tom, Drew, like. They fell off. Y'all got to deal with Patty now. Yeah, yeah. And the kneeling shit, fam. And your offensive, and Mahomes. And your offensive line is black, so they're Who's just moving out of the way. Didn't fight in World War II. We got to dead that now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Y'all tried no, to get Kanye out of here this year, too. They tried. They've been trying that for a couple of years. Yeah, Kanye's still here. Uh, he, 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 well, he's I'm still here. Only way we tried to get still owe the choir yeah. money. Still here. <laughs> no, you got to pay the choir. <laughs> you got to pay the. I'm about to say you can't cancel him because he's too valuable and he's worth too much. Yeah. But you got to pay the choir. Yeah, pay the choir. That's wrong. well. I mean, Virgil would give them fifty dollars. That was another moment for oh, me. Oh, Ellen. That Virgil Ellen might by. be the. Uh, the person that got canceled. You're not canceling Ellen. You can't cancel Ellen. Well, yeah. she canceled herself. Kind of. She's gay and dances. And yeah. is a fucking... I love show. Ellen, but... Well, you're part of the problem. Am I? <laughs> I might be. You don't care, even though they say she was being a meanie? <laughs> no? You know, cancel culture has gotten really funny like fuck. that. Where it's like, nah, she's mean, man. We gotta get her out of here. <laughs> Can- no, cancel, cul- cancel she's culture... She's a tough boss. Cancel culture, not just in 2020. Of course, it led up. Became its own genre of entertainment. So no, not, no one was really canceled, but it just became a form of what's going to entertain us for the moment. Yeah. It'd just be the next person. Cancel yeah. just mean we it's not just a form of entertainment. for the next three weeks. People, yeah. people yeah. just, just want to sit mean. there and feel more awesome about themselves because no one else has figured out what's wrong with you in your life. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. It like, yeah, wait till, well, unless you was popular, we'd find out about your nasty shit. Cancel culture and gotcha culture. Like the, oh, you said last week that... Blah, blah, blah. So well, now this I, changed, week you I changed my mind, and I'm not racist anymore. <laughs> there you go. That, it's that simple. It's that simple. People change every day. I feel like they keep trying to cancel Steve Harvey, but I can't figure nah. out why. Bulletproof. Like, y'all not going to... Yeah, he's bulletproof. Hey, yeah, stop nah, we just don't appreciate Steve Unless we find out to Steve us all them years, the man, for them, uh, them, that, that wig he was wearing. Oprah's another one. Unless I find out Steve Harvey's mustache is fake, he, he good in my book. Yeah. Nah, we thought Steve, we thought that flat top was real. It's all right. It's kind of swag. It wasn't, man. That shit was a box. <laughs> I feel like there's a big You think I can pull it off? To get us to <laughs> no. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> no. Not he was Donald impeached. Trump, he's still here. Yeah, I understand. He Donald might be the Trump most bulletproof. Then it's somebody else. They Doja Cat. Get us to can't. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. It's canceled. Oh, by the way, great. Talk about female. I guess she's a rapper. Yeah. Great year. She did have a great year. I know it's Doja no Cat. You're not allowed to say that because it's not cool. No, I'm taking your word. I don't know. You're putting me on right now. I mean, did you walk into a Macy's? I'm sure her song no. was playing. <laughs> I did not walk into a Macy's. Any department store ever? 
I'm sure her record was playing. It wasn't yeah. playing in Birdo. Tory, they, they, they tried to cancel Tory this year. I know. That was corny. <laughs> I'm with you there. Huh? Tory? Yeah, your little plan didn't work, nigga. My plan. That was yeah. my plan. That was you meeting up with the guys. Nah. Hey, y'all, he's putting out a capsule. Oh, Stop this. A capsule. capsule. <laughs> a capsule. This was the year of the capsules. <laughs> it was the year of the capsule, though, no doubt. Word. Whether it was no my doubt. fiber pills or clothes. He's putting out a, he's putting out a capsule. <laughs> Young boys, he's putting out capsules in this now. Yo, can someone tell me what a capsule is? Uh, a capsule. It's something that's encapsulated in this moment of time. <laughs> Every time you look at it, you think of that moment. All right, so no longer do mixtapes exist, or their first. You could put out seven projects. Your first album come Let's on your use eighth. Capsules. So when can my first capsule come out? How many <laughs> albums can I do in capsules? That piff, you gonna give me all my capsules? <laughs> <laughs> Every last one of them. Yeah, you fucking scoundrel. <laughs> Scoundrels is fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh. yeah, holding all your shit. Yeah, everyone holding your shit. You man. Let give up the masters. That bitch. <laughs> Fuck y'all talking about. Oh my god. I have all the sessions, so you know we can. <laughs> anyway. the masters to lose quarters. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> give me my mixtape masters, bitch. <laughs> all right, what else is happening? <laughs> Well, we didn't really talk about... Tori's in my disappointment, not for the obvious of allegedly shooting a woman. That's, of course, disappointing. But going... We've talked about the, the biggest falls in hip-hop history. Yeah. Man. That three weeks when of was, being the number one quarantine creator, period. Yeah. <laughs> to then allegedly shooting a woman is one of the, the most popular her. women. I mean, one want, of the most popular women in the entire world. Yeah. <laughs> like, All right. Rookie of the year, rookie of the year. This is when I get into my Parks Mall bag. Mm, mm. Uh, God I God. would mention Ransom here. He's not a rookie at he's all. Most improved. Not a rookie most at all. Uh, and I, I can like see that. that. Yeah, like he's, he's always been super nice, but he's like the nicest. This different. year yeah. was the, the best. He Ran connected with you different this year. And I don't know why. He's always he, been nice to me. Music. He went crazy this year, though. After he had the time to finally focus on music. Maybe so. He had some other things. Public 38 special is not a rookie either. Is, no. Did Rand get married this year or last year? Last year. I don't know. Or not this year. Yeah, that, that helps. That, that helps. That helps. Do you think, you think that's why, why Park got engaged? Because <laughs> Rand? <laughs> Listen, I did. Uh, if he did, I, I got to do it. Clear, I did it for Hove according to the internet. Well, that's true. That's true. I had to ask Rand. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joe. Uh, I'm going with Stove God here, man. Yeah, I'm, there's no yeah. suspense yeah. here that's for me. Like, he did it. Came out of nowhere. I'm gonna go. Uh, nowhere being upstate New York. Shout to upstate New York. Crushing well, something. Rochester. Well, didn't he do something in 2019? Place. He might have been me, on a feature on Rochester. Yeah, he's something. done something in 2019 that made me feel like, all right, let me see the type of year he has in 2020, and he did it. Mm -hmm. He did it. I loved all your shit. You fucking killed. Yeah. You killed at a time where I was purposely going out of my way to avoid new rappers. Yeah. Like he crushed. Yeah. A breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really rejuvenated things. <laughs> I'm going to go, uh, my rookie of the year is, is Giveon. Uh, outside of his actual project, having one of the better records with the Heartbreak Anniversary joint, and having a Drake feature, I think is quite the year <laughs> for a rookie. Fair. So yeah, I got, I got Giveon as my rookie of the year. Is Keanu Ledea a rookie? I don't think so, I but I guess... I call her that. I guess by... By, like, by artist by yeah. definitions. Yeah. Sure, to but I, she's not a rookie to me at all. But no I get why she could be in that category. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with uh, Stove God. Yeah, well, that's my rookie of the year. Yeah. His and, album is and uh, Saint John. I was gonna say, you think Saint John was a rookie? Saint is not a. <laughs> well, Benny, Benny's not kind of sort of. I mean, Meg, Meg's a rookie. Saint was like a Ben Simmons rookie, right? No, like sat out. Letting uh, red shirt, red shirt. Red shirt. Yeah, let niggas live the first year. Then uh, I, mean, we, God. I kind of feel like maybe Chance or her could be rookie of the year. <laughs> Davies. <laughs> Yo. Jay. <laughs> Charlamagne, come back. <laughs> come on. Jay Elect and Hov. I'm sorry for what I said. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm with. Uh, I'm with Stove God, man. Yeah. No, I, I, think, I think yeah. Stove God and Giveon are, are great picks for yeah, both Giveon genres. Too. Yeah, Giveon too. Yeah, I think R&B and rap, those those are really really good picks. 
I feel like I should have shouted division out in our R&B topic, but I didn't. I, I got two text messages that we forgot in our R&B Grammy talk. And then I was like, oh, fuck, he was right. I should have said that. And then both like, of the guys right from after, division? I forgot again. It was like, yo, you forgot again, bro. <laughs> division. Yeah. Hey, I had you at number four in my R&B of the year. Mm-hmm. Albums. Division, you're done good, man. Yeah, you're, you're done good. You're done good. Really uh, so what did we do? We did producers. Albums. We did guest features. Yeah. Uh, we did new artists of the year. Let's do most improved. I already said mine. Ran, ran, ran gets mine. Um, Tell us why. Because he was always nice, and he has not really been active for a very long time for you know whatever personal reasons. And this year, he put out five amazing projects. One not reason to do that. it. Yeah, it's a lot of projects. Who you got, buddy? Come on, Maul. Give it to him. I Most mean, insane. Improved. If you think about it. Um, Jay Leck. Hmm. Jay Leck, rookie of the year too. Most Listen, improved. he gave us two Jay Leck had a good year, whether y'all want to say it or he not. He did. Both Absolutely. those albums were good. Yeah. What, what albums? <laughs> Jay Leck. Oh, no, I'm not. Written Testimony yeah. and the one that was leaked, sort that of, was not. A, it was I really a really good album. To a lot. <laughs> Written Testimony and I didn't write this testimony. <laughs> or I wrote it and I've kept it on my hard drive. Yeah. Testimony. For 10 years. Hard drive. Y'all joking with calling Jay Leck a rookie, right? Yes, of course. Okay. But I do think yeah. Jay Leck had a really... I y'all. I know Cuddy. Well, I don't know the... The rules have changed, man. <laughs> I mean, if you think about someone that influenced all the rookies. Uh, Kid Cudi. Yeah, probably Kid Cudi. <laughs> but no, I think Jay like did have a good... Influence of the year? Kid Cudi. You have Ransom as your most improved. I, do. Damn, I don't know who my most improved is. I'm going to steal yours so you can go first. I'm going with Russ. Yeah, I am too. Not that mm-hmm. Russ wasn't great before. Yeah, I'm about to say you got to explain that because he was good. Not that Russ wasn't great or good before. But... Again, I'm picking people I think really stepped into themselves more this year, and I think Russ did that. Russ really put himself with the rappinest of the rappers. And helped them. And not only performed with them, but made the right song with them. And that's a really hard task as an artist that sells the way that Russ does. Mm -hmm. So I want to highlight Russ. I think you've done a tremendous job at... Uh, changing the minds of some of your uh, distractors, your naysayers, uh, people that just weren't rooting for you. Um, I remember two years ago, you being one of the more hated rappers. So to see what you've done in two years, like with the business, the brand, and the music, how could I not? Yeah. How could I not? Um, I'm going to go with Jim. Most approved. Jim Jones. I think Jim was, he was already a good artist. I think he was already a dope rapper. But this year, I think Jim, he took it to another level. His and album was one of my favorite albums this year. Yeah. That was this year, right? Yeah. No. Which, no. which album? It was last year. Oh, what? El Chapo. El Chapo. Oh, I mean, well, the Deluxe. Deluxe. This year. The Deluxe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. But. It's a new album. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Jim. Okay. I think Jim uh, really, really improved his song making. Um, I think he, he, made a, he made a point to really, like, Put himself out there more as an artist this year and show people exactly how dope he is. So I do want to double back on that Jay Electronic take because it, it, it is important to highlight the fact that he finally put some shit out. Came out. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a big deal because a lot of people get hung up on just putting out their first shit, waiting yeah. for it to be perfect, getting the perfect features, whatever it may be. And, and he did it and he executed it. He's Grammy nominated. Uh, we have to salute him. And that's another album that I think y'all should go back to having not listened to it after a while. Like, get rid of the, yes, this is a collab album with the greatest rapper of all time. Yes, I haven't put music out in 10 years. Mm. Once you get away from that hype and go back to that album and really listen to it, some shit on there. No doubt. And the one that leaked, uh, Scream Man, if you can find the actual title of that, that was a really good album that I wish we would have gotten in 2010. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Act 2. No, the written testimony was was the Jay-Z one, Scream Man. Yeah. Uh, Act yeah, Two Act had two. A, I Act really two. loved Act Two. Act Two was was really really good, and it was a leak in the middle of a pandemic, a so leak. not many people listened or got the hype around it. But yeah, Jay Elect quietly had an amazing year. Yeah, and not so quietly at the same time. Yeah, I really he had he had two good albums, so I, I have to put him somewhere. Yeah, and here's a good place. I Most will go room. back and listen to uh, the first one. Yeah, I think you should. And did you ever get into Act I heard Two at all? 
that run and hide shit with the bullets, um, I do, I do want to note, and this is going to cut my political ties, I'm going to go out on a ledge. <laughs> One of the worst attempts at a rollout ever. <laughs> what? Who was the lead singer of the bullets? Because that run and hide record on Jay Electronica's album featuring the bullets is phenomenal. Mm. That whole get on IG Live with everyone from Rock Nation to talk about a backpack and have Hove talk in the background. Oh, was is that what that worst, was? The worst attempts at a rollout. I have no information behind it. I it was. It I was remember that. I remember that. And this is offending all my political uh, connects. But mm. that was bad. Y'all buried that rollout because it didn't work. You had yeah. every last higher up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on IG Live with this gentleman about trying to find a backpack from a Grammy party five years ago to roll something out. It didn't work. Yeah, that was weird. And I goes back to my point of where trolling. I was happy this year. Trolling does not equal success. Power and popular people and legends doesn't always necessarily mean success and attention either. I like it. Authenticity. Good music, man. Success. Yeah. I like it. So. Good I love, music. I love that for you, Roy. <laughs> you know, I've been on Clubhouse way Don't too Don't do that. <laughs> I just do. Um... What else do we have that is super important here? Um, want to do our favorite verses? Or let's do you let's, do let's do be them? quick because we, we did a lot of verses, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let's go through our, our favorites since we're on the list. All right, version. we're back at list versus. Where's Imprint? Come on, man, that's my favorite. You don't say. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, shout out to Parks for fixing the audio of right. all the verses this year. Right. NBA shouted me out, so. <laughs> Speaking back to the corporate companies doing whatever they can. And NBA Youngboy, most streamed rapper, never gets brought up on any list. I know that was super random, but he is, all our he lists is. we've talked about, yeah. NBA Youngboy never gets brought up, and he's one of the most streamed rappers, period. But go ahead. Yeah, without a doubt. It's weird that he's not on any list. Agreed. Uh, my favorite verses. Um, I'll slim it down to, uh, and these might be two unpopular picks, but Neo, John to Austin. Yeah was one of my favorites just because of their pens. Um, along with, uh, what's my other one? Teddy Riley, Babyface. Mm. Part one and two. Yeah, part yeah. one. Part one might have been a better <laughs> one, somehow. Two was uh, great for me. Uh, and those are my two, if I have to pick. They've all been enjoyable. Jadakiss was one of the most uh, funny characters on a versus. And just a performance straight through, like, Kiss ain't miss a record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but as far as characters, I'm going Jada Kiss, Sean Garrett, Sean E40, Garrett yeah. DMX, and Snoop. I have, yeah, yeah I've, I've, Erica Badu and Jill Scott might have been my favorite. I think Snoop and DMX is my second favorite. Okay. Yeah. For the ladies. I can dig it. I can dig and, it. And for the people that are in tune with themselves. Yes. Mm. Just not gender specific. You're fluid. I got it. Um, so taking us to the next level. What? <laughs> Wait, who the fuck is uh, B- Bounty Killer Beanie Man? That was great. Was, was kind of changed the whole versus thing where it doesn't have to be just a battle back and forth. Like we could just jam out and yeah. party. That kind of changed the trajectory. I think that was the first in person like. one, too. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. That was and fun. that was kind of the first Jeezy versus Gucci Man. Like these, I mean, granted, they had made up. Prior to that, but right. nice to see two people that had an issue with each other be in the same issue. place, same to a way lesser degree with Brandy and Monica. That was one of my biggest moments of the year, too. I don't know if I brought it up in, in the biggest moments, but that watching Jeezy and Gucci be face-to-face and with yeah. all their history, yeah. that was a big that was I, I, That was actually bigger than Versus. That was yeah. way bigger than Versus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, yeah. it's true. And uh, Dan, there was one more thing in Versus. Oh, uh, Swiss and Timberland. For them to not only be the first, the first battle, yeah. um, but to still be one of the better battles after being the first one, after being the people to put all of this on, after being the people that kind of facilitate through some of these matchups, I really enjoyed their battle. And they went on for hours. Swiss was in a car. They went on for hours. <laughs> yeah, he got kicked out of his house, went in the car to get busy. Like, mm-hmm. that was really good. Getting kicked out of a mansion for playing music is hilarious. Yeah. And, and in verses, the car. In verses uh, what we've seen is whoever has the Mariah Carey catalog wins, whoever mm-hmm. worked with Hove wins. Mm-hmm. In Timbaland versus Swiss, you saw Tim go to his Hove catalog and then Swiss match it with yeah. the Hove catalog. Yeah. Like, 
I just thought it was real good to see. Versus gave me a lot of shit that I just never thought I would see. Patty LaBelle versus uh, Gladys, uh, Gladys yeah. Knight. Yeah, like, yeah, crazy. like, man, it's really been one of the bright spots of the year. I know you guys think this is an ad. It is not. Versus has not paid us this entire year. Versus pay us for the entire year. <laughs> um, Premium Rizzo was one of the favorites to me, too. Yeah, me too. Anything Preem is in is a favorite of mine. That's home team, that's family, that's gang, gang, gang. Those are the two re people that made me make music, so that was my favorite. And one of them happens to be a very good friend of mine. So that's oh, my Preem. favorite. <laughs> Preem, that was yeah, shout, shout out to Preem. Shout out to Preem, yeah. man. Uh, let's, let's see, we did... Features. Oh, bingeable shows, shows. Oh, come let's on, do it. let's do it. Come let's on, it. you guys. It was kind of a good year on the low for bingeables. It didn't feel like it for a while because there was a drought in the last couple months. Yeah, it was like a two, three month stretch where it was getting a little dry. Yeah. Tiger so. King ruled the first half of the year. Tiger yeah. King is a fucking legend. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah, that's a fact. That um, was kind of wild because there was so much to unpack during that bingeable shit. Outside yeah. of the animals, murder. Scream, man. Can you just put it possible, back to the screen? Man, the show possible sex please. slaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't need to see the Tiger yeah, King trailer. We don't need to see the Tiger King trailer. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it. <laughs> this guy's awesome. You're really doing your job over there. Hey. No, what, what made the bingeables more important during quarantine, you needed mad elements to it. Like, when I went through Tiger King, outside of cute, adorable tigers, yeah. you had murder. You yeah. had beef. Yeah. You had possible cocaine, sex. There's some cocaine involved, I you think, had, or meth. One of them. Uh, you Definitely had meth. gay people. <laughs> you had every last thing that you would need in a uh, bingeable series Facts. to talk about with anyone on the phone, Zoom, or people you were living with. Yeah, that shit was nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. And I still think yo free free Joe. Uh, what's his name? Joe. Uh, Joe Blow. Joe Blow. <laughs> Joe Tiger. Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. Yeah, your alter ego. And, exotic. and arrest Carol Baskins. <laughs> For real. She did it. Murder. She did it. She definitely did it. She did it. She had to do it. She fucking did it. You think she's like the OJ of the animal kingdom? <laughs> See, the whites always pull us back. They won't let us, you know what I mean? She got off, man. <laughs> Killed her significant other. Um... We got Jordan the, Doc, we got the yeah, Jordan Doc this year. Next one will be Last Dance. And I love that they didn't make it bingeable. Yeah. yeah. I love that I had to watch every Sunday. Facts. That, that kind of carried me through mad weeks of uh, depression. Facts. I had something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah. The Epstein Doc was The was, Jordan was, Doc, was yes. Great. Ozark was this year? Yeah. yeah was it? Last, uh, the season, last season two was this year? No, season four. Not I season believe. I'm bugging. Uh, All right. I thought that was year before. Not important. Well, I saw it this year. <laughs> Whenever. That's the thing about bingeables is it's it's timeless. Yeah. Emily in Paris. I liked Emily in Paris, man. I'm with you. It was a corny show, but I loved it. Yeah. I didn't. I have it. a fiance at home. Good. You know, yeah, she good. wanted to it watch it. It was good corny. It. it was good corny. Yeah. Yeah. No, my niece loves it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Undoing, one of our probably favorites of the year. Yeah, Undoing was phenomenal. The Undoing for sure. Uh, the Undoing, The Outsider, I liked. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, dis disappointment. I'm gonna add into this bingeables. Jeffrey Epstein doc, super disappointed. Yeah, didn't facts. give me a fucking thing. Facts. Y'all could have really given me a Jeffrey Epstein doc and you didn't. Yeah. I was definitely disappointed by that. He paid him off. I could see that. He paid him off. What about the social dilemma? Did y'all like that? I love no, social dilemma. Yeah, no, that social dilemma was, was great. I don't think that was really I important. think the Jordan doc probably wins it for me for the year. I can see that. Oh yeah. Little Fires Everywhere was was real dope on Hulu. I don't know if y'all watched that, but it was great. Uh, yeah, you, but they didn't hit the game when it shot against uh, Byron Russell. That's Utah. a good point. A push-off. It was a push-off. <laughs> Don't touch me while I'm hooping. It was a push-off. <laughs> but either way, yeah, the Jordan Doc wins it for me. Power Book 2, I didn't do. The Fires Everywhere, what we do in the channel, Black is King, the Mandor. The End of Power. was good. The End of Power. Was that this year? I believe it was this year. It's, it's on uh, the Yeah, list. Power Book 2 was this year. No, we no said the, the End of end Power. Of power. Oh, yeah, that was this year. Yeah. That was this year. Was it? Yeah. It should have happened yo, two or three years crazy. ago. Yo, be, I want us to be clear that we, we're aware that when shit comes out at the top of the year, it suffers yeah. from moments from moments like this where yeah. you can't remember the impact it had, yeah. can't remember what was going on when it came out. Uh, if the end of power was this year, that's high on my list. Yeah, it would have to be. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a moment, albeit a moment that should probably happen a couple years ago. Yeah, no, that wasn't this ghost. year. That wasn't this year with uh, <laughs> Sneak the Trey Song's intro on us. That wasn't this year. 
Uh, Listen, yeah. I respect 50 off listening to the fans this year. Because that Trey Song shit went out with power, and everyone said, this is trash. And 50 said, bet. Change it back. <laughs> they put out, I think, that first Pop Smoke cover. And oh, say, yo, yeah. this is trash. Yeah, and 50 bad. said, hey, change that fucking cover. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. life was a really Listen good show. To the consumer. That's not on the list of bingeables that we had here, but life was really good. 50 had a good year, man. Yeah, he did. 50 had a really good year. Music and TV. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that can't go without saying. Yeah, 50 did I. So TV was good. TV thrived. And we're on your, um, your honor now, so facts. That already seems to be one of the best of the year. And when your honor is over, we'll be right in the snowfall. Yeah. Woo! I'm curious to see how 2021 is with TV because most of it had to be shot during a pandemic. A lot of people were getting it done, though. And a lot of the stuff happens in, in, in uh, Atlanta and in, in L.A., which was, at least for a little while, wide open. Yeah, I just want to see if... I don't anticipate that it, it will suffer, but just adding in all the trials and tribulations that may come from a pandemic and trying to make things and create things in a pandemic, I'm just curious to see if it'll suffer at all mm. in 2021. Okay. Because they, they had to shoot this year for the most part. Yeah. yeah look, we're going to see a lot of lingering effects of the pandemic in music yeah. and arts. So yeah, it is what it is. Maul, 2021, yes. what would you like to see get back to normal first, dating or touring? Touring. Because you can date when you tour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You can meet me there. <laughs> go on the date tour. Yeah. <laughs> Touring without a date. Go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, can't tour while you date. Don't, cha- yeah. don't chase the women. Can't chase the while money. You tour. They right. come with it. Right. <laughs> Do y'all think the touring comes back this year? Uh, Absolutely. Late late this year, probably. Not full-fledged, right? Yeah, not, yeah. not, yeah. not, not touring once, once yeah. we what new, but I think some spot dates. Some people are on tours right now. Okay. They ain't getting on the stage anywhere, but they yeah. on tour. Okay. You know what I mean? They, they, I enjoyed the Griselda show on uh, Title the other night. That was good. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I'm about to ask that. How do y'all feel about online? I think it's cool, man. Fuck it. You gotta, you gotta like, do something. I like it as long as we get, like I said on the show. Uh, I would like to get the live albums. Okay. Yeah. I would like that. I would like. To, I would like. To, I would like that. Let's okay. get the live albums. Play with the band a little bit. Yeah. Give us a Spooks different, yeah. Give us a different track under, you know, underneath some of the, the lyrics that we already know. Mm-hmm. Play with it like that, and just give us like a different feel, different vibe. We did we we have that conversation off mic or on mic? Yeah, talk about mic. how unplugged mm-hmm. didn't capitalize mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, like, yeah. MTV unplugged could have killed this year. Yeah. Because yeah. those albums, like I love the whole unplugged album. Yeah. The Lauren Hill the best album, selling albums unplugged, time, is the second Lauren Hill album. Maxwell. Yeah. <laughs> This really could have been something you could have capitalized on this year. And I don't know why it wasn't the first thing companies thought of as far as this shit. Like, we could really create whole new live albums and bring that type of shit back. Mm. Especially in R&B. Like, very few rappers have done the live album well just because it's not called for in hip-hop. But mm-hmm. R&B, yeah. Yeah. That's where you live and die is off the live shit. Yeah. And the remixes and the different bands, like... Please give me a unplugged version of your album, or yeah, give me a that. whole new album that's unplugged. Yeah, Do the that. Lauren Hill shit. Summer Walker, go sit with a guitar and give me all your conspiracy theories over the same guitar <laughs> riff. I'm fucking listening. Yeah, <laughs> I I'm with you. Feel like that can still happen at the top of the year during the pandemic. Yeah, we'll but call some people. What do I know? I also feel like we probably can't properly end a year and wrap up without talking about uh, podcasting. Mm. Yeah. And the, I mean, the greatest of all time, clearly. The guys, just the good guys. But I mean, right how did you? How do you feel? How did you feel about podcasting this year? Uh, personally, or the genre? Period. Difficult. Both. Difficult, but necessary to the consumer more than I think it's ever been. Yeah. But also difficult for the consumer because I feel like most of our listeners used to listen on their commute. Myself included, I yeah. would listen to podcasts either when I was in the gym or when I was on my way to a meeting or uh-huh. when I was sitting on the train or when I was traveling to go see my mom. Like, yeah. that's when I listened to podcasting. Same. But I still think it was necessary for people in their homes to listen to something as well. So, yeah, yeah a very difficult, necessary process was podcasting. With you. I think it was, um, it was an interesting year for podcasting because it... One, a lot of people jumped into it. Mm. A lot of celebrities, um, a lot of just, you know, creators tried their hand at it. Um, Ball players. 
Yeah, athletes. You know, the pe- people tried it. They tried to get into it, and I and you know that's cool. But I think it because of the pandemic, it 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 shook the deck a little bit, and some people stepped away from it completely. We just stopped getting episodes. Um, some people fought through it. They just figured out a way to record. But a lot of um, zooms, a lot of zooms, a lot of zooms. But for me, podcasting again this year gave people something to talk about. It was always something to talk about. It was times we come in, we didn't have much of a list. And those were probably some of our greatest episodes this year. True. When we didn't have, when we didn't know what we were going to talk about. We just knew that we needed to get together and just, because we weren't around anybody. Yeah. So it was good to just see people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At some point, it was like, yeah, That shit saved my life. Yeah. Like, like seeing I y'all see every week. Twice a week. Twice a week. You know what I mean? Um, Same. It felt normal. Life felt somewhat normal. And, and I think, more importantly, I think... Uh, Companies, corporations, uh, a lot of CEOs, they saw the importance of podcasting Yeah. through this pandemic. I think people yeah. started to really look at it and say, oh, no, this is a this is a serious thing. Yeah. And this is a big money thing. And it's also something that you can do from home and it still kind of keep a pace with the quality, at least, right. of a studio low, thing. Low that overhead. Costs, low overhead. Right. Low budget. That's another thing, I think, outside of podcasting, what... Everyone kind of understood this year. Overhead. Offices aren't really necessary. Yeah. <laughs> like, every last company and corporation was like, yeah, maybe I don't need to have someone in my office 40 hours a week. They're not as productive. Yeah. You just saw what happened when someone had 20 hours a week. They got everything done quicker. Yeah. And we're a happier employee. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I think we'll that, that, that kind of goes Turns out to be a good thing or not. Shit of, of just what works and what doesn't when you're forced to strip down to just the necessities of what will be proactive in what we're trying to do here. Yeah. My message for the entertainers and saluting y'all and commending each and every one of y'all that contributed to the year under duress and such such a rare circumstance, same for the podcasters for me. Mm-hmm. Um, salute to all of y'all who had to persevere through lack of news, Mm. lack of content, through beefing with your co-host that you hate, uh, trying to be consistent. We got got over that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we fought, we pushed through. Yeah, Yeah, we did it somehow. (laughs) Trying to be consistent in a year where planning was obsolete. Like, so much went into, like, your craft, uh, all while trying to figure out how to get paid from the shit. Um, mm-hmm. Maul always talks about the pods that started and stopped. But for those of y'all that continued, for those of y'all that like kind of see the vision, see where this is going, and, and just are going to try your best to get there, man, I can't say enough about y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't speak enough about y'all during the year because I'm busy fighting with some of the same things that y'all are fighting with. But at the end of the year... To see the battles that all of us as a community have had to weather, I tip my hat to each and every podcaster out there. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. I and, do. I, and I appreciate all that positivity, but let me get negative real quick. Oh, yeah. Hate on somebody. A lot of y'all tried to pretend you was something you wasn't. Mm. And then 2020 came. And all that perception disappeared. It's been an equalizer and in that. Now we see who you actually fucking are, yeah. which is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> No, I can see how you got to that. <laughs> I can see how you got to that to that punchline. Yeah, yeah, coming off my point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, all that positive that's shit. Where I was taking them with yeah, that. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of y'all said you was something you wasn't, man. Yeah, we saw right. it this year. You ain't nah, shit. Okay. You're not talented. Okay. The perception shit was stripped away from you, and Listen, now you sitting here and exactly yeah. who you are. Yeah. Well, but no, the positivity, yo. Everyone that tried. Everybody that persevered. Listen, the creators that created, man. What a creation y'all are. Wow. <laughs> Listen, I don't think I have anything else to cover for the year. Um, you want to talk about next year? Yeah, yes. artist y'all looking forward to next year? Snow. Snow, snow would be, yeah, snow in the Neptunes. I like that. I like the sound of that. Nah, that scares me. They already did joints on the last and snow I, album, and they were really good. You just didn't know they were Neptune beats. Go yeah. look at the credits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I have to see. Yeah. I can see when that. they remixed the joint and put the Pharrell rapping verse on it, I didn't hear it make waves. Make mm. waves. <laughs> you didn't hear the waves? I didn't, I didn't hear that. You live so close to the shore here. Yeah, I didn't hear that. But if snow drops, cool. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to the blockbuster acts returning. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the big dogs coming back to big dog. I ain't gonna hold you up. You niggas that provided the entertainment this year, thank you. Thank you. Bless, blessings on blessings on blessings. Mm -hmm. But I'm waiting on the niggas. I'm waiting on the Kendricks, the Coles, the Hoves, the Beyonce's, the Drake's, the Travis's. The Lexus. The Lexus. <laughs> I'm waiting on, that's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting for the big Rihanna. I'm waiting for the niggas that move the units to peek out the window and say, all right, it's safe. I'm coming now. Yeah. That's it. 2021 is going to be a crowded year. Yeah, it is. I like least. it, though. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. A lot of big movies, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of big music. Yeah. Everyone has been waiting for 2021. Yeah. Let me see what happens. Everyone's coming. Here's a cold take. I anticipate the de deaths slowing up not because i think y'all are going to be less violent but you can't get more deadly than this year mm. has been and so i hopefully. really look forward to that yeah hopefully because going into hopefully 2020, god willing we had no idea what we were in for that ain't true yeah. in 2018 i said a whole bunch of niggas about to die yes but and I know that sounds insensitive. No, but I'm, but I'm not trying to be. I don't think you saw this one coming. Yeah, though. not just a death. Like this 2020, just I don't think as a year. You saw a quarter million. Yeah, something. No. Word. Totally no. different. No, I did not. Yeah, yeah. Ho I'm hoping that 2021 is to more life. Oh, God damn, another Drake pun. Uh, <laughs> He's everywhere. <laughs> Man, that boy's a star. <laughs> that boy good. That boy's a star. Right? Certified lover boy. <laughs> No, I'm hoping that this is this is a celebration of more life, uh, more bags for y'all. I'm looking to see the way that the country changes with the election. And listen, I'm looking to see a lot of shit in 2021, man. And um, in a moment of gratitude, I'm really thankful. It was a, a good part of the year where my goal for the year was making it to the end of the year. So that became um, a thing for all of us. Yeah, no, 1,000%. Yeah. So to actually be here right this second, I thank God for it. I don't take it for granted. Yeah. The fact that we're doing it with y'all and y'all are here, I thank God for it. I don't take it for granted. And I'm hoping that each of us bring in the year uh, with a better vibe and a better temperament than uh, the last year started with. That's what I got. And rest in peace to everyone that lost someone or lost their life themselves in, in 2020. Um, it's been a hard year. It really has. It's been yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now that was me and Parks' final word now. Well, 2021, <laughs> come on with your funky <laughs> ass. You waiting, goddamn. Yeah, with I, your uh, ugly ass. Come on with I your just, funky uh, ass. Be good to us, please. For, this wasn't all in vain. For hurt. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking forward to my album, 2021. Hey! Me too. Oh, shit. Me too. Yeah. I got a full palette of all the other artists. Uh, Stop yeah. playing with Rory. You, I'm sorry, you were saying. Uh, <laughs> no, I was dead ass. Cole, Kendrick, Beyonce, Drake. Rory. I'm trying to hear that uh, shit. Yeah, Rory, yeah. Looking for my shit. Yeah. See, Lex on That's it. That's right, yeah, Lex. Facts. Nah, they gotta stop playing with Rory. Yeah, yeah, nah, hey, Lex. I agree. Nobody's playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> I will deck everyone in person. <laughs> it's only the people that don't want to see me in person that try to play. Rory's got shit coming. I'm sure Parks will be mixing something in the near future. I'm gonna put out a lot of Me and Maul myself. have a collab project dropping. We ain't even want to give it away. Yeah, I'm sure St. Uh, John will be on there. I yeah. think 2021 will be the, the time we can start to convince Joe about thinking about a 2023 release. Mm. I'm saying. I think I think 2021 is the start mm. of getting to 2023 for the the Joe Budden EP. Yo, send me the beat pack. That's what they say now. Yeah. <laughs> and and Yo, send, that, we we send, that pack, send that pack through. <laughs> I think we can wrap this up. Let's work. <laughs> Yo, send that pack through is mad different from how I used to ask the beat. Yo, you don't have nothing for me, man. <laughs> Yo, no, I'm saving. I this can't get nothing. I'm saving this for a popular artist. <laughs> <laughs> These niggas on fucking chat, yo, let me get that pack. All right. Yeah. I'm like, yo, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, gotta, like I gotta come back. <laughs> niggas is getting back. I, go, I, I was grateful. I, pack, I, just I was like grateful this. for the for the folder with three beats in it. Ooh, I might like a few of these. <laughs> Listen, man, we out of here. That was our year end wrap up. Uh, man, oh man, I'm not doing it. Shout out to us, man. We won a whole podcast award this That's year. That's a fact. Yeah, man. Shout out to BT. Thank you. Trophy. Yeah, thank you to BT. I don't give a fuck. This is where we do the round of applause. Thank, thank you. Thank you for our BT award. Thank you for any awards that we were considered for. Oh, Appreciate you guys it. are amazing. And the ones we were. Couldn't have done it without you guys. I can't believe we weren't nominated for the iHeart Awards. I know. 
<laughs> this year I chose me. He hurt so much. <laughs> and it worked. And it worked. And it worked. worked man. Man. This yeah. was the I chose the pod. Put me first. <laughs> what if, what are the chicks gonna admit when they chose them and it wasn't right? <laughs> Never. I'm waiting for that. Never. I'm waiting for that. You got to double back to me and apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, my plan was the right one. <laughs> Fuck what you thinking. Anyway, yo, happy new year. Shout out to our first and last time listeners. Be safe Shout tonight. out to everybody out there. We wish you, your family, your friends, and your loved ones a really special year, a really special holiday, whatever's going on out there. Mm-hmm. And boy, the year can't get worse than the last one, right? It's, it's amateur night tonight. Be safe. I don't care where you're at. I know a lot of cities are open. It's amateur night. Just stay home. Thanks. Awesomeness and orgies for all of you out there. Yes. Awesomeness. Yeah. Awesomeness. Yeah. I like that. I mean, if you win an orgy, it's kind of awesome. Yeah, facts. Awesomeness. Sound man. <laughs> Hit our theme music. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. Roll the credits. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. We're out of here, buddy. 2020. Popping my collar to this one. Kick 2020 in 2020, 20. I mean, yeah, 2020. I was roll, the roll all the credits of just Joe's name, because that's all he does. <laughs> 2020. Executive producer. 2020. Mixed by Joe. Engineered by, by Joe. <laughs> Thought about by Joe. <laughs> Creator you don't have to go Joe. home 2020. But you got to get the you fuck gotta get the fuck out of here. Thanks. With that said, peace, love, and light y'all way. We'll holler at y'all same time, same place next year. You know the vibes. JBP, we gone, man. Hold it down. <laughs>